before we get started, does anyone want to get out? And here we go. Live from the Hollywood foothills of North Carolina, welcome to episode 69 of the Confirmed Epic Podcast, the official podcast of TheEpicReview.com, that's THEpicReview.com, and proudly presented by Geeks Worldwide. I, of course, am one of your hosts, The Real Brad Bell, and joining me today is... Andrew Stokes, also also known known as... Andrew Stokes. As I like to say, a.k.a. Andrew Stokes. I'm back from the beach, Andrew. We're back in the swing of things. You went to the beach? Yeah. I don't run any of this. Yeah, and I could not post the episode 68 oh, yeah. pod until the Saturday we got back because the internet connection was down there. So I apologize for the delay on that podcast, but it's out there. So you can find Andrew Stokes' opinion on Transformers 5 the last night if you want to. It's just Transformers the last night. Yeah, I like to add that five in there. Just to remind you, there's been five of these movies. We have another full show for you today. Today, we we are going to be reviewing Matt Reeves' War for the Planet of the Apes, which is the third film in this new Planet of the Apes trilogy that started with Rise of the Planet of the Apes, then Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. And we're going to get into what we've been checking out, as well as epic news. Yep. All right, Andrew Stokes, let's go ahead and get into what we've been checking out this week. Check, checklist, check. Double check, checking of checklist, check. So, Andrew Stokes, since I have a rather lengthy 4K story for you, I know you've been waiting for that, right? Another 4K story. Another 4K story. (sighs) From the real Brad Bell. It's just the resolution that keeps on giving. I have a tradition at the beach. And my tradition is... To drink an old-fashioned with your father-in-law at yeah. the pizza place. We all heard <laughs> that it. That is a tradition. But I have another tradition, and this is going to sound weird. To watch Jaws in 4K. No, no. We don't have a 4K TV there. Although, we usually do watch Jaws on DVD there. But we didn't this year, for whatever reason. Mm-mm. No, nope. But you watched Jaws this year, though. You yeah, right? you we watched, watched the Blu-ray? it right before we went down to the beach. So, real quick, uh, I'll just, I'll, to interrupt your story with my own story, it's short. I listened to the our bonus episode that you did with uh, your wife, Abby, where you guys talked about Jaws and the Blu-ray of Jaws. That day, I went ahead and ordered uh, Jaws on Blu-ray off of Amazon. Didn't get a chance to watch it yet, unfortunately. I was going to watch it a couple of days ago, but my friends and I... Uh, my one friend was too tired for a movie. I tried telling him that this is the Blu-ray so you can see boobs, but he uh, he, he wouldn't acquiesce. Wouldn't enticing acquiesce. enough for no. him. He's, 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 hey, speaking of that, did you get a chance to check out Arrival? I have not. That was the other movie I was like, I'm like, well, maybe I want to watch this movie alone instead of with people. <laughs> Arrival? Yeah, that may be a better alone movie. Yeah. It's one you really got to concentrate right. on, take a deep dive into, but... Uh, so it's, let me. It's you, longer than Jaws two, I imagine. Uh, so they're both about two hours. Really, okay. I'd say Arrival's about two hours flat. It's shorter than War for the Planet of the Apes, which we're reviewing today. Yep. So uh, Andrew, yeah. here's my tradition. Usually about th- this is a seven day trip, right? So this is the third tradition of the beach trip. Yeah, yeah. How many other traditions? Do you uh, there's have? a lot more. Some okay. I can't speak about on this podcast. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right uh, probably about Thursday. Usually I'm kind of burnt out of being on the beach or I'm literally burnt. Like this year I have a <laughs> terrible sun itch. I didn't get yeah. like burnt burnt, but sun I got itch. Ugh, sun itch is, is the like worst, a southern dude. term. I don't think I've ever heard sun itch before. It's, it, all it is is when the sky, the sky. Well, it is the sky, I guess, but the sun dries your skin out and yeah. it just makes it irritated. Sun and I got itch. a real bad case of that. So right you got dry now. skin due to yeah, the sun. I have not. Yeah, sun that itch. would be the probably proper way to say it. But Maybe in the south we say sun. Sun itch, itch is shorter. I like the, I like like shorter terms, but I have not been able to sleep well the past couple of nights because of it. But mm. anyway, so usually I'm on the back porch there. Everybody's at the beach, and I'll call Direct TV to try to haggle them for the best price on NFL Sunday ticket as possible. This is one of your <laughs> beach trip it's, traditions: is to haggle with Direct TV for yeah. an NFL ticket. Usually. I get a good deal or three. Uh, I've had DirecTV since 2011, and I during that time I would say I've only paid full price for Sunday ticket twice, and I've gotten it free three times. Wow. One was cause of moving, and one was cause uh, just getting DirecTV. But yeah, so. another time, another renewing the contract. But enough about NFL Sunday ticket. 
Uh, so, I wanted to get one of their 4K boxes. Okay. I was due for an upgrade on my receiver. Can you watch NFL in 4K? No. You oh, can man. watch movies on demand in 4K, and they have two 4K channels. One that shows various live events, and one that shows like Discovery Channel type stuff, like okay. nature documentaries Planet and stuff. Planet Earth and stuff? Yeah, Just stuff Planet like Earth in 4K? Planet really Earth cool. is in 4K. That's and awesome. They, and they do show it on there. So I was like, well, I got the TV, might as well upgrade. They make you sign a new year, con- uh, new two-year contract whenever you get new equipment, which is no problem. I mean, I'm going to keep direct TV. I've had it since 2011. So I call, speak with a guy whose name's Jameer. Shout out to Jameer, who was a terrible customer service representative. Really? I just want to say this. Direct TV used to have the very best customer service. Yeah. I mean, compared sadly, to, they need it. Yeah, compared to Tom Warner, who yeah. I had internet through at the time, I mean, it was like light years beyond. Spectrum. Now, well, Spectrum now, yes. <laughs> but, so, AT&T bought out DirecTV. Yeah. And AT&T, I guess their customer service absorbed yeah. uh, the DirecTV customer service. So, anyway, here's how it went down. I talked to Jameer. He told me I was getting NFL Sunday ticket for half price, and he would be sending me the 4K box and another box, and I could just hook them up, and there's going to be a box with that to ship the old receivers back. Okay. I'm like, this sounds good. Yeah. So then I checked my email later that day, right before we're about to go out to dinner at the pit, mm-hmm. which we talked about on the Confirmed Crap right. podcast, and it says they're sending me two 1080p Genie boxes. I said, hmm, this doesn't sound right. So I called them back real quick. Mm-hmm. And the lady, I can't remember her name, Ashley or something, she assured me that the right thing was coming. I said, well, the thing on this order is not the right <laughs> yeah. thing. I'm like, are you sure? She's like, I promise you. I was like, she, okay. She also said, Jameer hasn't worked here in 15 years. <laughs> uh, all right. So I get home. I mean, I... So this was Thursday. We got home on Saturday. Sitting on my doorsteps, a big direct TV box. Yes, you thought to yourself. I, that's exactly what I thought. But the box looked kind of small <laughs> for the receiver I was expecting. So I opened it up, and there's two Genie Minis, which are great receivers. Sure. But they're not 4K receivers. Okay. So I called direct TV back. Uh, after 30 minutes on the phone, they informed me that I could get the 4K receiver for the low price of $350. Hmm. And I'm like, dude, I already extended my contract yeah. because I thought I was getting this for free. And so he sent me to somebody else, and I raised more hell. So this is an hour. And uh, this is not meant to be racially insensitive, but for the first time, I got an American on the phone okay. an hour into the call. Yeah. Uh, who was with their customer complaints department, customer, like a special department that handles sure. complaints. Somebody they could probably actually do something about. Yeah, exactly. Right. And so uh, she said she was in Atlanta. So she did say uh-huh. that. I hate Atlanta Falcons, but apparently they got pretty good customer service reps there. <laughs> anyway, so I, I talked to her. I explained the situation like I told the other guy, look, does this sound right to you that I was talked into? I, well, I mean, I asked for it, so I guess I want to talk in, but I was told I was getting this equipment to sign a new two year deal. So I wouldn't have signed the two year deal if I didn't think I was getting the right equipment or I wouldn't get in, or right. I would have just kept everything the same. Because yeah. you don't have to extend your contract. Once it runs out, you can just go month to month. Right. And finally, she got everything taken care of. They said they were going to have somebody come out and install it, all that good stuff. Yeah. And then I said, can you check the price on my Sunday ticket? They informed me I'm paying the full price of th- over 300 bucks. I'm like, whoa, y'all told me it was going to be four payments of 40 bucks. Yeah. That's what Jameer said. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then she's like, well, I-, I can't do anything about it. She said the NFL now has their own department that handles Sunday ticket. Oh, God. So this is an hour and 15 minutes on the phone, Andrew. I'm not even kidding. So they transfer me to that. To the NFL. To the NFL. Roger Goodell picks up. Uh, Sorry, Brad. We're actually going to charge you more. They they got it to me. And this isn't the Sunday ticket max, so it doesn't have red zone. But I hate hate the dude that hosts red zone on DirecTV. Andrew Siciliano. I've never been an Andrew I haven't liked, so I find that hard to believe. He, I didn't know there was a, a host. Alex. Like, what, good, what is Red Zone show when it's not game time? 
Uh, they just jump from the most competitive game. To, oh, when it's not when game it's not time, they game don't time. show anything. Okay, so there's a host for this. Yeah, there's a host. He gets you to all the games live. Like in oh, he talks kind of in between. Yeah, four screens at one time. I haven't, I haven't watched Red Zone in a couple years, so I don't really... Well, I can't stand this guy. Sure. Alex worked at... Our, our buddy Alex Shabarsky worked at NFL Network. Right. And he hated him. He hated him. He said he, he really? treated him like dog crap. He's a piece of, <laughs> He's just so much of a jerk to him, and I'm like, wow. okay... He said he thought he was the hottest shit ever to walk to Earth. Well, so. he, he is an Andrew, so. And he does host the Red Zone channel, yeah. Direct TV. I mean, it's a pretty big deal. What channel does Alex host? Um, he is currently working at Enterprise Rent-A-Car, but he's doing fairly well there. We're not bashing Enterprise Rent-A-Car. No, just Red Zone's awesome. <laughs> All right, so I'm getting it for three payments of $33. Yeah. Without Red Zone. Which three I'm, payments of what, sorry? $33. So even cheaper than than you thought. No, it was going to be four payments to so 40 according to Jameer. Right, so you're getting it for three of, of for th- 33. Sorry, I mean six payments of 33. I misspoke. Oh, oh okay, okay. Yeah, six, three of 33. Say- Woohoo, 99 <laughs> bucks. Hell yeah, yeah sign yeah. me up. But anyway, uh, I, I just, if they did not have the Sunday ticket, like if next year NFL said you can buy the Sunday ticket directly from us, like you can the NHL and the MLB packages, I, I would drop direct tv i'd probably finish out my contract yeah then i'd drop it and just buy it straight from then yeah so i don't know I, yeah. their customer service is crap now if you could buy just red zone i might be able to somehow but if you can get just i don't red think zone, you can i don't know see it's every year it's like there's something different on like the verizon nfl app and a lot of years they have like red zone on there for free yeah. Um, if you're on a certain plan or if you have a certain phone or something. So a lot of years I get it on there and I can just put it on during a game, which is nice. So Andrew Stokes, once you get into something uplifting. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll get into something uplifting. It's a customer service experience, which is a positive one. Oh, wow. You and I went right. through it today. We showed yes, up, we did. We showed up for the movie. We showed up like right at showtime. We figured we'll miss the Coke ads or whatever in front of the, <laughs> in front of the movie. Um, and they told us, well, it's actually the, the, they're having a problem with the film. Supposedly, when they switch from showing it in one theater to another, they have to like re-download the movie. Um, and so they, they had, um, their download had messed up during the night, so they were still trying to download it. So it was going to be about a 15-minute wait, they said. Brad thought this was the end of the world. I thought it was all right. And then they offered us I a, was afraid we wouldn't have time to fit the sh- podcast. Right, in. right. I understand. Um, but they, they offered us a free popcorn uh, or free drink. For uh, watching it, I unfortunately, had, I sprung for the slushy, which I don't even know if you were supposed to get a slushy. Probably not. I had water with me, so I got the popcorn, which I still have like half of it sitting right there. That's for later. That's for future yeah. Andrew to enjoy. Um, and then when the movie started, they actually just skipped all the trailers. So Thank the movie, God. the movie wound up starting on time around. Yeah, the time it would have anyway. We we you know based maybe on our even before maybe even before right. So and they, they were just really friendly and stuff. So shout this out to AMC now. Shout out to our local AMC. MC. They were they were friendly when they were Carmike. I as miss well. Carmike, dude. You know my favorite was when Ben was the manager there yeah, that you yeah. went to high school with. I didn't go to high school with. Him. I thought I, you went to high school with Ben. I, no, I just know him through friends. I'm trying to remember when the first time I met him. Didn't he go to your high school? No, I'm pretty sure he went to Crest. Oh, okay, okay. I'm pretty sure he may have gone to Kings Mountain. No, no, no. Cause he is he a lot younger than us. He's I don't like know. Is that a lot younger than us? Now? Yeah, I would have known him probably. I don't remember. That's him. true. I, I knew him through Brett though. Okay, it's how I met him. But I've, I've known him and, and his uh, his older sister for a while. Yeah, he's a um, good guy. But he's a, um, he's a runner. Yeah. I dropped my Facebook. I got rid of that. But you're not on Facebook? No, nah, I just I got off of there. I, mean, I was just spending so much time scrolling through Facebook. I did uh, a month or two ago. I took Facebook. It used to be one of the apps when you start the phone. It's right there on the home screen. I took it off. So it's like the only so time. So addicting, man. It, it can be. It's 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 easy to just waste time when you have like a minute. It's like okay, I'm just gonna scroll, and it's like you just want it. Thirty minutes. Right. So now, really, the only time I I opened it is I have like certain people uh, set up that like when my when my sisters post something, it'll pop up on my phone, or there's like a couple groups that I'm in on Facebook, and whenever something. That's what I miss anything. the most is the groups like yeah. Mondo Trader, Hot Toys, stuff like that. Well, I get on there to. Uh, run the uh confirmed uh epic podcast whatever Facebook page. right which i abandoned yeah i post i i basically when i do an article i share it on there and i, I want to start sharing the podcast on there as well 
You can start with episode 69. I started with episode 68. Oh, wow. Yeah. Bravo. All right, I, Andrew I, I know you were on there because I, I was waiting for you to come. I, I wrote a pretty big blurb oh, about man. it. About us traveling back in time and stuff. <laughs> oh, wait, I missed this. Oh, man, yeah. I'll have to screenshot it and send it to me in the I'll text. just read to you when we pause this at some point. So orange is the new black. Right? Oh, yeah. So what I've been checking out, I just finished literally half an hour ago while I was waiting on you to get back over here from after the movie um, over to my house. And grab a healthy snack at Dunkin' Donuts. Have you, did you get a snack? You just got a drink. I got a bagel. Did you really? Ham, egg, and cheese. That was my lunch, dude. My God. Oh, my God. Dude, this is what I've ate today. Okay. I had, no, Lord. I had a like a Kellogg's lemon bar. Mm, okay. How many calories? 160 calories. One lemon bar? My God. A banana. (laughs) Okay. All right. Uh, Two cups of coffee with creamer. Okay. Of course. Uh, A slushy. Okay. (laughs) Uh, Iced coffee. (laughs) All right. And a bagel. All right. That's not that bad. That's not too bad. It's four o'clock in the afternoon right Uh, now. Let's see see what I've had. Uh, I had one pizza. (laughs) A four piece chicken supremes. (laughs) With fries, macaroni and cheese. <laughs> this is great radio, right? Which I put Texas feet on the mac and cheese and use both special sauce for the fries and chicken. Mm. Uh, I drank a large sweet tea with that, of course. If you're on a diet with... right now listening to this, I feel sorry for you. And I hope then, Abby doesn't listen to this. And then when I went to the movies, I had part of a, a regular size popcorn, some water, and now I'm having a medium coffee from Dunkin' Donuts. What a great time to I be went, alive. I came in Andrew's house to put my... To put my Coke in the fridge. Yeah, no, why, and why do you have a Coke in there? You haven't even drinking it. I know. I thought I might get thirsty before I was going to get like a giant <laughs> iced coffee. Okay. And um, when I opened it, it was like six pizza boxes. I'm like, do the freaking Ninja Turtles live here, dude? <laughs> yeah. Like, I've been eating a lot of pizza since I moved in, if that wasn't uh, obvious. Well, especially this week, too. I've probably eaten pizza like multiple times i don't know i haven't, I haven't gone grocery shopping okay so that's orange is the new black season one <laughs> and it's been great so far <laughs> on to the next topic no for so real. Finished, how is it i finished season one it, it's one of those comedy shows um where it's it's not necessarily super funny but it's like entertaining you know what i mean? kind of like friends i'm just kidding <laughs> I'm joking. I think Friends is funny. like like Entourage kind of uh, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's like I I think I was in season two of Entourage before I stopped. I was like, wait a minute, like what is this genre? Is this supposed to be a comedy? Because I wasn't really laughing, but it was. It's fun. a turn your mind off, just blah genre. Like yeah, Entourage. Entourage, I mean. but Orange of the Orange is the New Black isn't like. There's yeah, actually yeah. like interesting storylines going on in each episode. I thought it was going to be more serialized, almost sitcommy. But it's actually, or uh, episodic sitcom. I mean, instead, it's it's like a serialized, almost drama. It's like a, it almost is like a, a drama comedy. Dramedy. Know, dramedy is that yeah, the phrase? Yeah, dramedy is the term. Yeah. It's, it feels like that. So it's worth catching up on. I think so. The first season, um, yeah. I mean, it's not my favorite yet, but I can definitely see it. Uh, getting there you know what i mean like there's a lot of there's a lot of interesting stuff going on there's a lot of different characters that all of a sudden you know one episode you're kind of following this character and just you know i'm definitely invested in some of these characters and uh, interested to see where they go all right real confessions i've never finished breaking bad i'm on the next to the last season i don't know if that's four or five i can't remember um but there that many seasons there's five at least i think i'm on wow. season four like four episodes in and man i'm so bored by this show dude like i know everybody loves this their favorite show i mean i got i i can't pass judgment on it until i finish it i will finish it but you know you can pass judgment on it now you should not be bored by it at this point it's just i mean it's dry they're they're cooking they're cooking they cook 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 all day long and then it's like once or twice or sometimes three times per season Something interesting will happen. Now it's great characters. What? And great acting that what? really is just char- it kinda reminds me of Walking Dead. Like, As you sound like you're describing Walking Dead, but you're describing breaking back. Like Walking Dead, you gotta watch the first episode of the season. Yeah. The finale of the first half. The, the, the premiere of finale, the second yeah. half. And then the season finale. Now, you're insane. I don't know, man. I, I, it's just not now. I'm not, I mean, everybody tells me, get to season five, get to the episode Ozzy Mendez, oh. the best episode in the history of television. And it's like, if this show is so epic, yeah. should I really have to, oh, wait to the end? Yeah, it's like the second to last episode. Yeah, which yeah, I'm going yeah. to. I'm going to get there. Sure. No, God, I, so. and I totally agree. 
fantastic episode. Um, written by Ryan Johnson. Ryan Johnson. Directed by Christopher Nolan. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> but it's the guy who's uh, <laughs> directing Last Jedi. Okay, cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, but I think it's good up to that. There was an episode in season three, The Fly or whatever it's called. Yeah, I watched that one. But I knew that was going to be bad. Yeah. Well, see, some people love it. Some people, that's their favorite episode. It just didn't do anything for me. I, I, I enjoyed it more the second time than the first time. The Maybe fir- it's just like everybody's told me. I think the two shows I've heard described as the best shows ever yeah. are The Wire, which I haven't watched, okay. and Breaking Bad, yeah. which I'm going through right now. The Wire is really good, too, yeah. yeah but but I, I definitely think the early Wire is better than the later Wire. And I really like season two, which is probably most people's... It's from the few people I've talked to about this show, watching it a decade later. It's I think season two is people's least favorite season, when my but wife I really came enjoyed home it. Another night and said, "Let's watch Parenthood." I would have rather watched that than Breaking Bad. That's crazy, dude. I know. Like, Breaking Bad's I mean, so good. I, I mean, I get that I'm out of the loop here. Yeah. But I just, it's just not. I mean, I'm just being honest. I mean, of course, the easy thing would be to say, "Oh, it's so good," but I mean, I, I don't think it's bad. I mean, I can appreciate. It almost kind of no, it's okay that you, yeah, it's okay that you're not into it. Lord of the Rings kind of like, I appreciate it. Yeah. I thought they were great to epic movies. Yeah. But I just couldn't get into it. Sure. That's kind of yeah. how I feel with Breaking Bad. Like, I'm I just think so, it's I'm, so well done, I just can't get into I'm it. I'm just surprised that you can't get into Breaking Bad is my thing. It it's not so like much that you don't like I would it. Like. Yeah, yeah, it really does. Sure. I'm so. really surprised you're not into it. You don't want to say anything else about Orange's New Black Season 1? No, I want to talk about Breaking Bad now. No, I mean... It's good. I, I understand what the hype is about with this show, though. So I'm interested to see, because it's supposed to get better from here. Speaking of hype, I'll yeah. tell you what I watched yesterday that was epic. Fate of the Furious. I could not get my wife to go see this in the theaters. She loved the seventh when we went and saw that one. Yeah. I mean, it was. it should have been the best ending to a franchise. Yeah. Seven is just a great ending. How they handle the whole Paul Walker thing after his death. Just so well done. Yeah. And I was kind of, when I heard they were making Fate of the Furious, I kind of got upset because that ending was so well done. And I I didn't want to go see it kind of because that. Sure. Abby didn't want to go see it, so I never saw it. And then it's like, hey, it's summer. Uh, Might as well watch it. I ordered it on DirecTV, on demand, not in 4K, because that was (laughs) like 12 bucks. And the wow. 4K was 5 to do on demand, so I just did the, it. The HD, you mean? Yeah, the 1080p. Sorry, yeah. 1080p. HD. But, man, Andrew Stokes, I can't believe that you have... Because I, I text you, and I'm like three quarters of the way through this movie. I'm like, this is looking epic. To me, six, epic. Seven, epic. Eight, epic. Now, five, I think I remember being like a great... That You and I saw five in the theater. That was that the, the one, one where they dragging the, the rock. Are they dragging the vault? Through yeah, the streets? yeah. What an opening scene, though. Have I not seen six? Six is the one that ends with the uh, airport scene, where they're the plane scene. If if you, that doesn't resonate with you, you hadn't seen six. So it's one of the best action scenes I've ever seen in a movie. I feel like I have seen six though. It's one where Michelle Rodriguez comes back. She comes back in four or five no she comes back in a post credit stinger in five right so Spoilers she's in for six Fast and the Furious, i feel like i've but... seen six i kind of remember this scene uh somebody's attached to the plane one of their cars is or yeah and a main character dies i'm not gonna say who right now but it's like a reference a reference what do you mean the guy dies what's that a reference to what are you talking about <laughs> Well, one of these. I'm referencing him dying. Is that what you mean? There's a character that dies early on in the franchise, and it takes place in the future. That movie. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, but I don't want to talk about that. Just in case, I know some people like they see. I know this is not your perspective, but Jerry, Jerry, who never heard, never heard Jerry Barbecue Seventeen, never seen any of the Fast and the Furious movies, and I know he watched number eight. He did? No, I'm just kidding. No, they're bro <laughs> movies. And I'm like, Jerry. He said that? Yeah. He plays every Call of Duty. I'm like, Jerry. No, he didn't say they're bro movies. Oh, okay. But he kind of gave me that. That's just not for me. Sure. You know? Which I understand. Well, but, I, but, but think about the first ones, though. Okay, the, first the first ones were all about... The first one is epic, dude. The first one. Mm. It is. I, now, it is cheesy. It's dated. But it is an epic film. I don't remember ever seeing that film and thinking it was epic. Do you not remember the scene where they uh, 
They I remember the scene with the truck I where they hijacked that spoilers truck. Spoilers for Fast and the Furious 1. I remember the scene where Paul Walker finds out that Vin Diesel and his crew are the bad guys that the police have been looking for and that he was tricked into thinking they weren't the bad guys. And so when he finds out, he decides to join them for some reason. Because family. There's more to Because family. Oh, my oh, criminals are people, too. You know who Welcome to the world, this, Paul Walker's character. You know who loves this franchise? The kind yeah. of funny guys. Really? Oh, yeah, they, they do. Nick Scarpino. God, they love this. But but the first, like, especially the, the second one, because it takes place in, like, Miami or something, they definitely... It's bad. They too have fast, this... Too Furious. It's oh. not, it wasn't as bad as I remember the, rewatching it, but hold on. Let I'm, me say. I'm sorry. They, they I'm sorry. have this, you see like the cars, the neon, and all like the women, and it definitely has this kind of, Stigma. not action, yeah, it doesn't have this action movie feel, the the first ones. They definitely, like just based on the, the marketing of the time, it was like, oh, this is like, almost like a teen type thing, you know what I mean? It was, I mean, it was kind of. I mean, it when was. you were teenagers, these movies, because these came out when we were in high school. Yeah. And, and they were huge. I mean, everybody. Jerry was in a, a mature adult at this point yeah he was a grown-ass <laughs> man 30 years old by this point now i'm just kidding okay so here's what i'll say about this franchise it's one of the oddest franchises because it does kind of start out in bro territory yeah and the, the first three are so different yeah and then four's okay mm-hmm. and then with five four's okay but it's like it's good because it's like, oh, they're like, back. They're back. Like, wow, they're just re they're basically kind of redoing the yeah. franchise with the same it, people. At like, the time it was good. Looking yeah. at the franchise as a whole is probably I think Too Fast, Too Furious is the the worst one. Okay. And I think the only good thing is it does introduce Tyrese uh Tyrese Gibson's character, who I love. Yeah. Uh but anyway. So you hate number two you, you dislike number two more than you dislike Tokyo Drift? I like to get dressed. I see. I do too. Yeah, so. I like that when it came out. So, and it's got Lucas Black in it. I man. like it still. Little Bow Wow's in it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Bow Wow's in it. And what's his face? Um, Ludacris is in all of them. Ludacris, no, the uh, Asian guy. Yeah, uh, what's his name? Such an important character. I can't Kim. remember his name. It's something Kim. I Jin. Think. Jin? No, that's the guy from Lost. I right? don't know. That's not All the... right. <laughs> I don't know, but he's Han. His name's Han. Okay. That's his name. Okay. All right, so, but Five is like a complete fresh start for this franchise. They become big okay, yeah, heist yeah. action films. Yeah. And it's like, oh my, nobody saw that coming. Yeah. And Five was really great. Yeah. But to me, I consider five, six, and seven like their own trilogy. Okay. Like you could start watching five and watch six and seven. I don't know if you'd appreciate it as much if you didn't watch the previous films. Yeah. But they're definitely like a contained story arc in those three movies. Yeah. And it introduced most of the world to Gal Gadot for the first time before she was ever. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I know I have seen number five then because I know I've seen the one with her in it. I don't. She's in six or six. And seven. I don't That's know if she's in five. I can't remember. But that's why that's I know. I definitely have seen five. But six, I'm, I know I've seen because she was in that one. All right, let's talk about eight. Okay? I'm All not right. going to spoil it for you. That's fine. Uh, but there's four. Did, you didn't want to spoil number three. This crap has four epic action scenes in it. This All right. crap. All right. It's not crap. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So there's one like chase scene in New York City choreographed so well. There is an opening scene that's got a little action. It's okay. So Measure That has three kind of epic scenes. Probably my favorite scene of this movie is a jailbreak scene, which they show in the trailer yeah. with The Rock and Jason Statham. Statham. Yeah. I hate. I used to hate Jason Statham. Yeah. I thought he was the most overrated, like, You're bro th- actor. <laughs> bro actor? Yeah. I did not like the Driver movies. We got to figure out bro. Transporter. Oh, yeah. What's it's the transport. driver then? I don't know. It's a video game. Okay. Did they make a Transporter. driver movie? There's I'm Baby sorry. Driver. Well, I know Drive. That's Ryan Gosling. That's a great, oh, that's yeah. an epic movie. I haven't so seen that one. You need to watch yeah. that one. All right. So, anyway, that jailbreak scene's iconic. Iconic may be able to push it in. <laughs> iconic already. This is iconic. When The Rock says, I'm going to beat your ass like a Cherokee drum. I'm you like, said that? <laughs> that's a line. Like, is this part of a lot offensive? <laughs> it sounds like it. <laughs> I mean, I know he's like, you know... Samoan. Right, Rock but... Samoan. Which would not be Native American, by the way. Okay, so, great jailbreak scene. But I used to hate Jason Statham until this franchise. And it's funny, because I like Jason Statham. Yeah. And I haven't watched a movie since he got introduced. Yeah, he's so yeah. good. And I... 
he has a much bigger role in eight than he does any of the other movies. And more than seven, really. Yeah. Okay, because yeah. we're well, I don't want to. Yeah. So, um, you know, the, the whole it seems like a theme of this year a little bit has been the good guy turning on people. You had Optimus and Transformers. You had Dom and Fast Eight. I don't know if there was another one. Seems like there was. Maybe I'm wrong. But the ending scene where they're, uh, I think they're in Ukraine or Russia, I can't remember. That scene with the ice that you see in the trailer with the submarine and all that. Yeah. Oh, man. It's really epic as well. I mean, I, I'm excited. And the closing scene, mm. the way they, they, they did something that paid tribute to Paul Walker, even more so than the end of 7 did. Remember that song that they kept playing on the radio that was in Fast 7? No. Oh my God! I can't remember the name of the song. It was like a hit. Was it? Was it in a tribute video? Yeah. yeah, I've seen that tribute video yeah. too. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Most people know the song I'm talking about, even though I don't know the song I'm talking about. But the, they do a cool small tribute to Paul Walker at the end of eight, like not at the end of the film, talking like within the, story the film wise, story. Yeah. And man, that that about gave me. I think that gave me goosebumps. It was really. I love. I'm. I can't believe it. I'm excited for where this franchise is gonna go. Wow. It's still going. I've places. heard rumors that they are going to do at least ten, and one of them is going to be in space. I remember when I reviewed six. That's too much, right? I reviewed six. Okay. All right. And I wrote, "This is getting a little cheesy. Yeah. This this crap's going to wind up in space." You can find that review at thepicreview.com, and no joke, they're teasing that. That's crazy. Yeah. Okay. So enough about that. Do you want to talk about Kong? Um, but you can we can mention it real quick. All right, I watched Kong Skull Island. I did watch that on 4K Blu-ray. It looked beautiful. Um, I think so. I said I'd give Fate of the Furious an epic. I would give this a good and a half. Okay. Uh, I kind of agree with your statement on the film. What was it that you told me? Um, I said it. it it's kind of disappointing. It should be better because of who's in it. Like based on the cast, it should have been better than it was. And I like Larson. I like your retort though. What'd you say? I said I think without these actors, yeah, this movie would have been bad. Right, it could have been worse. It could have been without a lot. that. I cast. think they elevate the film. I mean, you have yeah. John Goodman, John Goodman, Samuel Jackson, Brie Larson, Brie Larson, uh, Tom Hiddleston. Hiddleston. Yeah, I mean, there's somebody all else star too. Cast I feel like. in yeah. there. Um, God, the guy. I know this isn't saying much, but the guy that played. Toby Kebbell or whatever. He played Dr. Doom in the Fantastic Four. John remake. C. Riley. That's that's yeah. what we're forgetting. Who I was dreading. Yeah. He ended up being yeah. a good part of this film. He wasn't too over the top. Yeah, he was. Not especially not in this movie, because there's a little bit of a little bit of over the topness in this movie. It's very it's, it's it definitely is a little bit stylized. Yeah, you know? yeah, it is. It looks beautiful. I mean, I think Kong looks really good, yeah. the effects. Yeah. I'm excited for I may be the only person excited excited for the godzilla versus king kong movie. I'm, I'm excited for that i did not like godzilla that much yeah we reviewed it i mean i thought it was a good movie yeah i like this more than i did that godzilla what about you i, I think I, I think i'd probably give maybe give it a, a good what would you gave godzilla a good i don't remember it was kind of boring i probably was higher on it at the time i'm gonna re-upload now. that podcast <laughs> Retro Rewind Godzilla Edition. For, for no reason. <laughs> Except we mentioned it on episode 69 of the Confirmed Epic Podcast. So, Andrew Stokes, yeah. we have a lot of epic news to catch up on since right. I was out of town. So, let's get into some epic news, both long form and rapid fire. Andrew Stokes, yeah. D23 was last week. The yep. D23 Expo, and I think it's in Anaheim, California. Disney only does this every other year. It's their own pretty much little Comic-Con in a way. They usually, in the past couple years, at least the years they have D23, they usually kind of sit out Comic-Con in some areas or pull back their presence at San Diego Comic-Con, which is this upcoming weekend, which we'll probably talk about next week on the podcast. Uh, But It's almost like like Nintendo with E3. Yeah. And they kind of, you know, they're involved, but they kind of do their own thing. Exactly. That's that's a apt comparison. Thank you. D23, the big thing this year was Marvel's Infinity War. Yeah. Now, there's a bunch of Disney stuff. I mean, there was Wreck-It Ralph stuff. There was yeah. Incredibles 2 stuff. There was Toy Story 4 stuff. Live action stuff. There's well, a lot of yeah, stuff. Yeah, like people, they kind of show how the live action Lion King was going to be, and people teared up. It was supposed to be an emotional reaction. I cried just thinking about it. 
Me too. I did not. Uh, but we're not going to get into that. What? We're, we're going to get into the Marvel stuff. Oh, God. That's what I hate care. the Marvel stuff. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> Well, uh, the Star Wars stuff. We're going to get into that, too, There wasn't right? really... No. Yeah, just a little... I'll get into that in rapid fire. The, there wasn't much. The biggest thing was probably what the amusement park stuff. Yeah. That came I'm out. I'm not getting into that, because okay. I'm not going to that for, like, five years, probably, so... I still haven't been to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter yet. Yeah. I don't care about Harry Potter <sighs> like that, so... I'll go, I would go see it if I was in Orlando. Well, yeah, I mean... All right, let's get into D23. So right. the big thing here was Avengers Infinity War, mm -hmm. which comes out May 4, 2018, directed by the Russo brothers. I, I want to ask you a question. Okay. Which film, I know one's a 2017 film, one's a 2018 film, but which film are you more excited for? Last Jedi. I knew you were going to say Or Avengers this. Infinity War. Uh well, you've already kind of pointed out one of the one of the reasons I'm probably more excited for Last Jedi, and that we're about to get Last Jedi. Um, so I don't I don't know. I'm just it, Last Jedi. I, I don't know. You, you don't know exactly what you're getting with either of these. But Here's you, the thing you with Last like, Jedi. Yeah, we had that one teaser, a celebration, mm -hmm. and which I still haven't seen. Okay, which I respect that decision. We'll see if that lasts. But. Nothing for it's almost August, yeah. And we have nothing for this film that's coming out in December. Yes, we have not had a full. I mean, that was a true teaser. It barely showed anything. Good. I don't know when we're gonna get a full trailer for this. Surely they're not gonna wait to Thor Ragnarok in November. No, God no. I mean, I just don't know. When, maybe Comic Con, but I mean, they're not gonna have a big presence there, at Disney. So who, a lot of people think we may get. That at Comic Con are just released during Comic Con. So yeah. The Hall H is buzzing about it. What other Disney stuff's coming out uh, this year? A lot of people think we'll get an Infinity War uh, trailer Comic Con weekend. I think we'll hmm. get an Infinity War trailer in the, the post credit trailer. scene of Thor Ragnarok. Because there's something in that, at least the trailer, which I'm not going to get into, there was something in that Infinity War reveal that they showed at D23 yeah. that spoils, a, which we won't get into here, that spoils a part of Thor Ragnarok. At okay. least it sounds like it. So I can't imagine we're going to get an Avengers Infinity War trailer before Thor Ragnarok. I just can't envision that. Now, Andrew, well, unless so, they leave that kind of stuff out of it. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, guess they I could gotta, cut a different trailer for yeah, maybe, sure. Maybe a teaser trailer. Maybe something as as little as the Last Jedi trailer. Remember at the end of a Captain America First Avenger when they showed the Avengers trailer? Yeah, I hate sizzle that. Reel? I hate that. Really? Yeah. I thought that was cool. No, because all the other stuff was like... Like little like extra scenes, all the stingers up to that point. Yeah. And this was just like a it was a, it was well, a trailer. It was the last movie before the Avengers. I know, but it was just it was just a trailer for Avengers, and I was like, really, this is lame. I did not like it. I liked it. Yeah. I remember coming out of that theater. Wow. A little bit, yeah, a little bit disappointed <laughs> from uh, Captain America: The First Avenger. I thought that was a good movie. I was expecting a great to epic movie. But You're like this would have been better if it had been a woman in World War One. Yeah, and it was. Yeah, well, that movie is <laughs> called Wonder Woman, directed by Patty Jenkins. Okay, so let's talk about some of this Infinity War stuff. All I'm right. not going to spoil too much of this, but let's if you're spoil, let's spoil Thor Ragnarok for the fans. All right, but if you absolutely do not want to hear anything about this footage, like Andrew Stokes, but unfortunately, I've already heard about it. <laughs> yeah, kind of tune out for the next three to five minutes. So. Here was the thing that I took away from this footage. Three, I, I three didn't to five see minutes, it. okay. The description of the footage, yeah, it, which I read and watched some stuff at IGN, read some stuff at Slash Film, is that holy crap, Thanos is a badass, and yeah. his scope and scale, yeah, compared to every other villain we've seen in the MCU, yeah, there's nothing even close. There's even well, a, he needs to be. I mean, that's what we expect. They've been expect. building him up since Avengers 1. So. That's what we want. They say Thor, in comparison to him, looks weak. Okay. I mean, dang. Can you get any more epic and power scale than that? I don't know if you can. If Hulk looks weak. I, yeah, Hulk looks weak is what... Yeah. I don't know if they said that. Did you read footage that said Hulk? I haven't read it. The only thing I know is what you've told me. Okay. Okay, so here's what was the jaw-dropping scene from that footage. It looks like Earth, it's like dusk, and there's a one-on-one -on -one fight between Iron Man 
and Thanos. And mm-hmm. they're just going at it. Iron Man's supposedly giving him everything he has and nothing's working. And and Thanos has not even put on the Infinity Gauntlet yeah. at this point. He's kicking Iron Man's ass. And then Star-Lord comes down and challenges him to a dance-off. No, mm-hmm. that would be awful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so Thanos puts on the Infinity Gauntlet and then begins pulling the moon toward, I guess, what is Earth. Yeah. I don't know if he's going to crush Tony Stark with the moon. I mean, that sounds kind of dumb. I don't think dumb. he needs to uh, crush him if he's just if he's just going to pull the moon that close. Okay, so, yeah, that's true. So this is, this is how Aquaman gets introduced, right? The tides get messed <laughs> up and he shows up. Maybe Namor. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I, so Fox Fox owns the rights to Namor, right? Universal does. Universal owns the rights to Namor. Yeah. That's so random. But I think there was something that happened where those rights did revert back to Marvel. Okay. But I'm not a hundred percent on that. It's so, Universal still still owns Hulk, right? Or is that Paramount? Yeah, yeah Universal. It's Universal. Still okay. Hulk. Still owns Hulk. So okay. Um, anyway. <laughs> anyway, this footage here, it also showed what. I think is Nomad, which is Captain America in the comics. Like during the Vietnam War, he got upset with what his country was standing for. Yeah. And he dropped the shield and he adopted the identity of Nomad. Yeah. Apparently, Chris Evans, uh, Steve Rogers has a full be- beard here and he has a different outfit. It's not the cap outfit. I'm pretty sure he's a war criminal, right? He is a war criminal. <laughs> yeah. According to Hannibal, whatever his name is. And, uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, that's the gym teacher. Okay. The actor that played the gym Okay, it's a Hannibal. Uh, it's Hannibal something, I think. I was about to say a Hannibal Navies, but that's like an old backup linebacker for the Panthers who sucked. Okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, also in this footage, we see Spider-Man in the suit from the end of Spider-Man Homecoming. Okay. Wait, the suit? The suit that he refused Yeah. at okay. the end of Spider-Man Homecoming. And... They they say that words, even though they try to, that words really can't describe like the the scope of yeah. Thanos and the scale of Thanos' power set. Yeah. And I I wanna ask you this. Who dies by the time that these two infinity movies are over? Vision, I think, because he has an infinity stone in his freaking head. Uh Captain America, maybe? Cap or Iron Man? One of those two is biting the dust. Yeah. I mean, who would be... Oh, no, maybe Iron Man. Because Cap... Obviously, we're speculating here. We don't... We don't have the script in (laughs) hand. Tom Holland gave it to us. Um, um, Who was going to... Oh, Cap was the one that had that vision back during... It was Age of Ultron? No, that was Tony. It was Tony. He had the vision where everybody was dead, and he was just witnessing all that. I was like, uh, Cap had the vision. He was back with Peggy back in World War II or something. Yeah. So maybe Cap dies. Really? Yeah, they got to do something with him. I Move think the Falcon that, into that role. I think Iron Man's going to bite the dust at the end of part one. Even though they're not... See, now they're calling... Oh, they're going to do some stupid fake death, aren't they? I hope not. But now they're He's going to come back during part two. <laughs> God. Oh, God. Lazarus Pit. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're going to use like the life stone on somebody. I know Lazarus Pit's What, what, are, what are the different stones? There there's is five a, of them, right? Yeah, there's the time gem... Uh, let's see. Is there oh, one God, called? The, I hope they don't do time Is there travel. one called the life? I don't know. There's time. I'm sure there's something they can bring people back to life, and they're gonna bring Iron Man or somebody back to life. There's time, soul. Oh, what if they use the time gem to send Captain America back to World War II, <laughs> where he can get it on with his his girlfriend's. And great, then that character aunt? you're seeing is actually the son of Chris Evans. Who's now in the, the pre, or the grandson of Chris Evans? Who's now in the presence as Nomad and gave up faith on humanity during the <laughs> or Vietnam War? Or what if it War. turns out that Captain America is really the son of Tom Holland now? That would be weird. That would be weird. Or Tom Holland's friend was it Ned? What was yeah, his name? The man in the chair. Yeah, that'd be was, really weird. <laughs> I, I hope he shows up sometime during Infinity War. I he's, just, he's, he's like talking to Peter while he's on a different planet. It's no, like Skype. Thanos him. is attacking, and it's like big, apparently there will be a second battle in New York in this. Okay, this is gonna be way worse and bigger than the Shatari <sighs> attack. We just we got to see whether in this one or the sequel, not part two, but the sequel. We need to see those street level heroes doing something. Man. I don't think those defenders characters are confirmed for. I know I don't think they are, and I hope I never find out if they're in it, and it's a surprise if they are in it. But I really it's want in them the to first be in it. teaser. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
So here's have a, you met my friend Daredevil? So you had it. Avengers. You had Avengers Two: Age of Ultron. I yeah. know uh, you had Civil War, but technically that was a Cap movie. Yeah. So this is so that's ne- one of the reasons I feel like Cap is like Cap had his first movie, and then Winter Soldier was really good. But it started to include Avengery yeah. type stuff, and then Civil War was practically just an Avengers movie. It was, and it's like I consider it. What are they going to do with Cap? I mean, they could do stuff with Cap still, but they could also I could see them. Okay, we need to move on, move on from Cap. You know what I mean? Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. I, but you hear the stuff that uh, Robert Downey Jr. is saying too. It sounds like he's done with it. Yeah, and uh, not in a facetious way. He's just saying, "Hey, I mean, my time with the son playing this playing this character. It's, this time's about up." And then in ten years from now, ten years after the se- sequel, we'll get he'll come back somehow. The old CG him completely. Be a young Tony Stark. I don't know. Compu- I want old, I want old Tony Stark. It's like okay. the Kid Avengers. And- <laughs> oh, God. Okay. So, but here's the thing. Yeah. Remember when they first announced these movies, it was Infinity War Part 1, Infinity, Infinity War, War Part, Part 2. 2. Yeah. Now that's not the case. Right. They say that that movie that's coming out in 2019, a year later, is not Infinity War Part 2. It's a completely different story. They're just calling it Avengers 4 for now. They said it's now. a completely different story. Or... They said it's a different story from Infinity War. But it's got to it's gotta be holdover. There's got to be holdover well, stuff. Well, Infinity War it, must it, be like three hours long Infinity if they're not War, splitting it. Yeah, Infinity War ends Phase 3, right? Or, I'm sorry, Infinity, the, the second one ends Phase 3. Sorry. It yeah. was originally Part 2, right? Yeah. So, Avengers 4 ends Phase 3. Right, okay. Yeah, so... So it's got to continue. So I hope that they're not. Well, you know, we we're Marvel and we can't do any wrong. So instead of making it two movies, let's make it one big ass three hour epic. I'm fine with that. Abby, every time I bring this up, yeah, and Abby likes the Marvel movies. Her eyes roll and she says, "This is gonna be too much." And has she has any of them ever been too much for her yet? No. Yeah. No. See, that's the thing. Like, part of the most exciting things and of the reason. One of the reasons of the Avengers, the first one, and Civil War is so much fun is you're adding in all these characters. You know what I mean? And it's like, dude, like, Infinity War, you know, Spider-Man's coming back probably in a bigger way. Some of the characters that weren't in Civil War, Thor and Hulk, you assume they're coming back. You have new characters, Doctor Strange, who I believe is going to be in it. Yeah. He'll be in Thor, but he's also going to be in Infinity oh, War. He's in Ragnarok? I didn't I'm know pretty that. sure I've heard. I still haven't seen Doctor Strange. Really? That's and the it's only just, Marvel movie I and haven't then, seen. And then the big one, Guardians, you know what I mean? Star-Lord meeting uh, Tony Stark, you know the what I mean? The opening like, scene of Infinity War involves the Guardians. I can tell you that. I can tell you what it is if you want me to. No, I, no, okay. Tom Holland, keep it to yourself. All right. I'm, have you seen that interview with Tom Holland yeah, and Benedict Cumberbatch? Hardly anything, right? Yeah, but have you seen the one with Tom Holland and Benedict Cumberbatch? No. Where somebody asks him a question and he starts to answer, and uh, Cumberbatch is like, I'll, I'll, "I'll answer this one." <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So the Black Order has been confirmed. Remember, those right. are Thanos' his minions, kids. not his kids. Yeah, like his, his like Bowser team. Jr. His strike team, pretty much. Now, that's interesting because we mentioned that a couple weeks back on this podcast, that it was rumored, there was speculation. They actually gave the full character reveal at D23. And they all look, surprisingly enough, just like their comic book counterparts, Mm -hmm. which is something that Marvel's usually... They change stuff a little bit, but they're usually pretty faithful to the comic book costumes. Right. So, all right, speaking of Spider-Man, who we were just talking about... Let's get into two Spider-Man stories here. Okay. Uh, John Watts has been confirmed by Disney to be directing the Spider-Man Homecoming sequel out July 5th, 2019. Okay. It's good. Yeah. I mean, he did a great job with the first one. Should be continuity. You, you expected it. Yeah, yeah, we did. Everybody he wants to come knew. back. They want to come back. They it's like James Gunn with Guardians. Uh, you know, have his stamp on these. Hopefully, he'll be around for this whole Spider-Man trilogy. I think James Gunn has probably put the biggest stamp on any oh, Marvel yeah. movie. For sure. Yeah. The first Avengers had a nice Joss Whedon feel to it as well. The second one, not as much. But no. uh, they got involved there. Disney yeah. did. So, uh, But let's lead Get into... Get Thor scenes in there. To a more interesting Spider-Man. We haven't seen Thor since Age of Ultron. Remember that weird scene where Thor went He's in, in the cave. water? Yeah, that was like, what is bad. happening? He's looking, he's looking for Horcruxes or something. <laughs> yeah, it's it what it seemed like. It's yeah. like Deathly Hallows up yeah. in here or something like. I hate it. So anyway, 
here to me, this was the most. Besides the film review we're doing today, this is the thing that I wanted to talk to you most about. Okay. So we know Uncle Ben hasn't shown up yet in the Tom Holland Spider Man verse. Right. But the room, it's not a rumor, okay? I should not say that. I missed It's not a rumor, it's confirmed? No, it's not confirmed. Tom Holland said he wants Tobey Maguire, the original cinematic Spider Man, yeah. to play Uncle Ben. Your thoughts? Now, this is Tom Holland. Are you sure it's not confirmed? It might be confirmed. <laughs> Um, my thoughts, I, I don't know, is, I haven't seen him in a while. The last There's, thing we saw McGuire in was Secret- Great Gatsby, yeah. I think. Great, Great Gatsby. Gatsby. He's not secretary. Seabiscuit? Seabiscuit. Seabiscuit. Um, By the way, I heard there's some bullshit. Okay. Oh, I, I'm not trying to pick beef with the Sight and Sound podcast because I love those guys. Oh, man, you're wearing one of their shirts I'm right now. I'm wearing one of their shirts right now. But yeah. you, man, Great you, shirts. You picked that. Ryan whatever. Snelling was on our Alien Covenant episode. Uh, I love those guys, but I just want to disagree with both of them. Oh. They think that Toby Maguire is not that good of an actor. What? Okay, I'm like... The Topher, Topher Maguire? Topher Maguire? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Maybe I, they're proving their point. You don't even know his freaking name. Toby Maguire. I was thinking of... Uh, to- uh, Grace. Oh, for Grace. Thank you. V- A.K.A. Venom. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking of. Eric from that 70s show. Let's Don- run- Donna is in Orange is the New Black. Oh, really? She's a main character. Laura name. Pepperton. Yeah. That's her name. It's Donna, I, right? oh, Yeah. I love that 70s show, dude. That's probably, like, when we were in high school, that was the show. At least for, uh, what? It was. That was the show that everybody talked about at school was that 70s show. Do you remember, like, what the show was? I remember. I remember the show that everybody, that I remember, at least because it was only for a little while, but the most talked about show, I feel like. Uh, was, the OC was big too. Oh, the OC. I was thinking Chappelle show. Yeah, that was big. Um, but Friends was still going on when we were in high school. It, it ended my show. senior year, so your senior year right. too. I remember Chappelle's that '70s show. Yeah, a little bit of Friends because it was ending. There was a lot of hype. The OC for that one season was huge. Well, they, that, they had a five episode. The first five episodes were during the summer, right? And then everybody was like enamored with this show. Yeah. We need to do an OC review, dude. I, I binged. That's probably the first show I've ever binged. Like, my uh, I, I, in uh, my first year of college, my roommate. Oh, my gosh. What? Breaking news. Chester from Lincoln Park committed suicide. Oh, wow. At the age of 41 from NBC News. That's sad. Yeah. We just lost Chris Cornell from Soundgarden from suicide earlier this year. Lincoln Park just came we out with a new. Arrow, too. Yeah, Linkin Park just came out with a uh, new album, and they're touring. They're coming to Charlotte, even. Well, they're not touring anymore. But yeah, that's sad. Good, it right. sucks. Yes, uh, Re- George Romero. Yeah, uh, Day of the Dead. Yeah, Dawn of the Dead. Uh, the original Dawn of the Dead. Yeah, Dead too at seventy seven. But guys, tragic news there. But um. Speaking of tragedies, Uncle Ben's death. Um, so, what do you think about this, Tobey Maguire? Is he old enough to be Tobey Maguire? That's what I'm asking. I, what does he look like now? He was 30 years old. Wait, I got to get back to my beef with sight and sound. Hold on. Okay. Okay. So it's not a beef, but I just want to say this. Tobey Maguire. Tobey Maguire. <laughs> yeah. Pleasantville. Yeah. Fantastic in that. Never seen it. Really? No, I'm just kidding. I've seen parts. I don't know if I've ever With seen Reese that. With Reese Witherspoon. Right, right, right. Cider House Rules. I have not seen that. Oh, my God. That's his best role. Okay. Like, I mean, he, I love him as Spider-Man, but as far as like his sheer talent, yeah. Like that is when you see this guy. I don't think Tobey Maguire is a good actor. You don't? No, I'm saying they don't think They don't. Yeah. They said they see him, and they just think, meh. Some people, you know, who some people hate uh, is Leo. You know, DiCaprio? Yeah. Uh, I don't even talk. He's the, one of the best actors. Some people, they hate him. Okay, so, of course, you have the three Spider-Man movies. Yeah. He's particularly good in the first two. Uh, you know, Sea Biscuit is what it is. The Great Gatsby, he was fantastic in that movie. Now, he was up against Leo. I don't, even, I don't think I remember him being in that movie. No, I'm saying I haven't seen it. Like, I remember Leonardo DiCaprio's in this movie. Yeah. I don't remember... You know what Tobey Maguire is awesome at? I was telling Abby this the other night. What? Like self-narration. Like okay. him talking to himself in his head. Mm-hmm. He's the best actor at that in okay. Hollywood. Okay. I mean, he's he does that in Gatsby. He does it in all three Spider-Man movies. So he's fantastic at that. He was in that movie Brothers 
which was an action. Oh, he was good in that. That's underrated. That's an underrated movie. That's an underrated movie. movie, Brothers. I think that was like 06 or something like that. No, it was it was like 09 or something. Now, I, feel like. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of Seabiscuit, but I mean, that movie, people like, I mean, critically, people like it. Yeah. I mean, how can you say this guy is a bad actor? I mean, it's all uh, it's all relative, I guess. Yeah, I guess it it's is. All subjective, I should say. Subjective. Yeah. Somewhat, it's somewhat subjective to say okay. he's a bad actor. L- let's do the math here. How Marissa Tomei's fifty-one? Okay, that's that's rude. Tobey Maguire was thirty in two thousand seven, so he's forty years old right now. Tobey Maguire, because Spider-Man three came out. And was, yeah, so fifty-one to forty. I mean, I could see it. Okay. He could be Uncle. I mean, they could age him up a little bit, give him yeah, some white know. hair or something. Get the jackass crew in back there and make in, him look Back like- in my day, the Green Goblin was running rampant <laughs> around these parts. You, you see him out uh, <laughs> the first scene of Spider-Man Homecoming 2 is just Tobey Maguire crying. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he's, he's kissing Marissa Tomei by hanging upside down. <laughs> I was like... I, I can't believe I'm saying this. Yeah. I want to see this. No, no. What I want to see is I want to see Spider Man the movie, where we get to we get oh. Spider Man from another alternate reality. So you want, but what? But see, that involves Miles though. <laughs> Who cares? Peter Parker and <laughs> meets Peter Parker. <laughs> no, we get all three Spider Man together: Andrew Garfield, Tobey Maguire. We Peter get the Spider Man movie, but it's like, or the Spider Verse movie. We get uh, Spider Gwen in there, Miles Morales in there. We get everybody in there. I'm sure it'll happen one day. Well, yeah, they really not with Tobey Maguire. But... What if they start doing? What if after like all this Marvel stuff kind of has run its cor- course, they do the ultimate? Marvel Universe, Cinematic Universe. <laughs> they get the Fantastic Four rights. Yeah. That'd be cool. I mean, I would be It's not the Fantastic Four. It's the ultimate Fantastic Four. Yeah, I mean, I could see, like, you know, this bubble burst a little bit. People get tired of when it. When is this bubble going to burst? I don't... Because you, like, you see... Going you, into this year, I was thinking maybe soon. Yeah. But, I mean, this year, Guardians, Epic, Logan. I gave an Logan. Epic. Logan, Guardians. I don't know. We're talking about Marvel. I'm talking about the Marvel itself. Logan, I know it's Fox, but it's, but it's not. I don't know. I'm talking about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh, I don't think that bubble's going to burst until after the Avengers 4, at least. But even after Avengers 4, Spider Man 2 doesn't come out until after Avengers uh, 4, right? That's supposed to start Phase 4. Exactly. So yeah. it's like, people are looking forward to that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Ant- when is Ant Man and the Wasp? Is that, uh, is that Phase 4 or Phase 3? I think it's Phase 4. Wow. If that's Phase 4, I mean, that's another one. People, Ant-Man wasn't the most popular of these movies, but you still got that. You got not, not, another Doctor Strange, which people really liked. Ugh. You haven't seen I it. I watched the first 30 minutes, and both time, one time my dogs broke glass at my house. The and you said, time, you said, thank God. The time Evan had a heart attack, so <laughs> yeah. I'm scared to watch he, it. He really didn't like that movie. He went back and watched He's seen it. That's, <laughs> that's the that's ironic funny. thing. That's funny. Okay, so would you like to see Tobey Maguire as Uncle Ben? Um, I mean, and, and that's not a uh, idea I would have come up with. But I mean, if that's if it they goes if they to told me Street Alley and Andrew Garfield's gunning him down, have you ever danced with the devil in a film? Andrew like? Garfield's a villain. That'd be Andrew great. Garfield's the killer of what, Uncle Ben. Uh, that be that would be cool. What if Andrew Garfield comes on and plays Venom? That would be cool. God, uh, that would be cool if he's Eddie go. Brock. Yeah. You know, I could even see Andrew Garfield. I know he wouldn't do it now, but I could see him being Harry Osborn. That's what I want to see, Harry not? Osborn, man. And th- now, I usually a purist. Now, he's going to be older, though. There's no way, like, Andrew Garfield and Tom Holland Andrew are, like, Garfield's, best friends. Andrew Garfield's like, 30 years old. Yeah, there's no... He looks about 25. But there's no way you're going to get him to, like, Harry Osborn and Peter Parker are childhood friends. Like, No. <laughs> But you like maybe maybe Tom Holland maybe Peter Tony Parker McGuire Tom Holland his friend. <laughs> you know what I see when I look at him tragedy. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Let's move on. So but what, what do you so, think? I, I mean, I, I want to see it. If they cast it, cool. It's not what I would pick, but I could totally. If if they cast it, I'm like, okay, they know what they're doing. Yeah, I trust. I trust Marvel. I trust Kevin Feige. As long as he's there, the puppet master, I trust what As long as you told me that Marvel made this decision and not Sony, I'm there with you. Yeah. But. (laughs) Okay, let's let's go on. We got a lot of news today. Okay, we got rapid fire coming up? Uh, Or we see that? Let's go ahead and get into our rapid fire section. (laughs) 
All right, AK Andrew Stokes, you ready for some rapid fire? Here we go. Yeah, I'm, I, you just read off the news, and I'm just going to say yes or no, and then we'll move on. Okay. No. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, Disney and Tim Burton's live action Dumbo movie getting a March 29th, 2019 release. Is this something you want to see? Yes. Yeah, I want to see it too. I'm excited for it. Tim Burton, I'll, I'll pretty much go see anything he does. Did you ever see his Planet of the Apes movie? I did. Is it that bad? Because this one Tim Burton thing, I have, I've seen bits and you pieces. You haven't seen it? I've never watched it all the way through. I don't remember enjoying it. The makeup's crazy. Yeah, they didn't yeah. do have CG with that. That was all practical. Um, I don't remember hating this movie, but I don't remember really enjoying this movie. I about bought it on Blu-ray because you got because I didn't have it, but you get a free ticket oh, to okay, War yeah. for the Planet of the Dude, Apes. Dude, I I bought Lego Movie because it had a free ticket for Lego Batman. Yeah, and totally forgot to use the ticket. Totally forgot oh. about it until like a month later, and I was like, oh, she's supposed to have used this. Shazam! Shazam! To start filming in 2018 for a 2020 release, I'll believe it when I see it. Yes, Th- this this movie <laughs> has just been up and down. I don't really give a crap about it. All right, both. I care about it because the rocks in it. That's the only reason. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, again. The Rock is Black Adam is something I'm excited I'll about. I'll go see anything The Rock's in. God. They, they need to do something funny with this movie. Like, they need to have a comedic. If you watch Young Justice, uh, Shazam is in that. And he's a, he, it's a is lot he of... the kid? Yeah, Billy well, he's, he's Shazam a lot of the time. And Rob Lowe does his voice. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, well, and, like, and he's just like, he's funny because throughout, throughout most of it, like, people don't know he's a kid. Especially the other, the Young Justice team. And so it's just, there's some funny situations. He's very comical and, it's, and just very enjoyable. Okay, moving on. Both Scorpion and Chameleon are rumored for Silver and Black, the mm-hmm. Black Cat and Silver Sable movie, October 2018. No. Yeah, that sounds <laughs> bad. Is it going to be the Scorpion from Homecoming? That, that's what you I'm posed this in. question. Yeah. I mean, if it is, it's like. Okay, so if Sony's, Sony's going to try and. If and Sony's t- doing, they're going to screw this up. <laughs> If Sony's doing all these movies, yeah. they got to have a plan down the road to like... Inter- <laughs> That's very nice of you. That's very nice but of you I mean, to think okay, so. They, I'm not saying they can, you know, uh, orchestrate the plan or, you know, bring it to fruition. Yeah. But they... They, they should have a plan. Okay. To bring Tom Holland. I could see like he finishes because he did a six movie deal. We talked about that last podcast. Mm-hmm. That runs out. And they're mm-hmm. like, okay, we got him back. Thanks for making Spider-Man great again. <laughs> you know? It's like, yeah. I don't know. If they, I just, my only hope is, I don't give a crap about these Sony Spider-Man movies, as long as Spider-Man's not in there. Other than Homecoming, you mean? Yeah, because that was right. a Sony slash Marvel. Right, right. I mean, that was just, a co-production. Yeah, yeah, to clarify. Uh, director Chris McKay has, who's also directed uh, Anchorman, one of your favorite movies mm-hmm. of all time. He has grueling expectations for Nightwing. He says he wants this to be the most in-shape, on-screen superhero there's been today. Looking at Chris Evans, Chris Pratt, um, Hemsworth, to be in better, or even, the best be in better shape, shape of on those the big guys? screen? Because I'm also yeah. thinking of uh, uh, Amel from uh, Arrow. Oh, yeah, God, that guy is in shape. Yeah. Wow! Wow! Uh, maybe he <laughs> see this is a, again a subjective. What does term. that even mean? Do you mean do you want him ripped like Hugh Jackman, yeah. where he's eating like twenty eggs a day or something? Current Hugh Jackman, not yeah. X Men One Hugh Jackman. Or do you want him to be like? Do you mean acrobatic? Yeah, exactly. What does that mean? And also, I mean, yeah, I don't want to. I'm not. Uh, no offense to uh, overweight people, but I don't want a fat Nightwing. <laughs> I do. Fat, hashtag <laughs> Fat Nightwing. But, um, hashtag, hashtag Make America Fat Again. Hashtag Not My Nightwing. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't even know what that means. It's such a weird thing to say. It's a DC movie, so they'll screw it up. Yeah, it's, it's not gar- Wonder Woman. I, I got to want a Nightwing movie. I love Nightwing. Yeah, I knew I, Derry I likes him too. Um, they're going to screw it up. I could care less. I mean, I like Nightwing. I don't like love him or anything. You could not care less. Yeah. Uh, Last Jedi. They released a behind-the-scenes video and uh, character posters at D23. Character posters were weird because they were all... It was like Finn, Ray, and Luke, and Leia, and they were all wearing these red robes. The same red robes. Who? Luke, Leia, uh, Ray? Luke, Leia, Finn, and... Yeah. Finn. Yeah. Which was weird. That is weird. That kind of got me thinking like, okay, Finn is not a Jedi. But I was thinking he think. might be Force-sensitive. 
I mean, there's things that I guess could indicate that in TFA, but who knows? I mean, Wait. we'll see when we see a teaser trailer, like no, the no, day before the movie comes out. No Kylo Ren in red robes? Mm -mm. No just Kylo, those, just those four. But in this feature, this behind-the-scenes feature, they revealed that Kylo Ren had a new mask. It was about the most interesting thing, hashtag interesting, to come out of that behind-the-scenes thing. I will say that... It was interesting to hear Carrie Fisher say and Mark Hamill say this is unlike any Star Wars movie there's ever been. Like, don't expect that whole... They didn't say this, but to me what they were hinting at is don't expect the TFA thing where they're kind of rehashing A New Hope. So, That's good. So that makes me excited. Uh, just, again, chock full of news this week. Dark Tower is only 95 minutes out yeah. August 4th. That movie looks bad. I don't know if it looks bad, but I think the I think 95 minutes is a good news for it though. Like it seems like the type of film that could overstay its welcome. And 95 minutes, it's like okay, we could have a cool action movie. Now I don't, I haven't read the books, so I don't know really anything about it. So maybe fans of the books really want a longer movie. But to me, it's, it's that, like that's a good seven news. book series. Right. If, if I knew they were doing seven films, which this movie would probably do poorly, despite having McConaughey. You think so? And having McConaughey and Idris Elba yeah. and being based on a Stephen King book. I mean, it's weird because you got that. And then you have It in September. So it'll be back-to-back -back months. You have Stephen King adaptations in the theater. But yeah. there is no buzz around this movie, really. I hadn't felt it. No, not no, at all. So. But I mean, it's an August movie, right? So it's... Yeah. That don't mean it's a complete turn. August 4th was like the same release date Guardians of the Galaxy had in 2014. I, mean, I still don't feel like there's a lot of buzz around Hitman's Bodyguard. and that's that's Hitman's uh, Bodyguard? What's Samuel that? Jackson and Ryan oh, Reynolds? Oh, yeah, yeah. That yeah. movie looks bad. Are you serious? I mean, I'll watch that it. That made my top no, 10 of the summer. I don't know if it looks bad. It's like, it looks, I think it, it looks, looks really generic, good. It looks generic like action comedy that I would watch on demand or I would get at Redbox. But I don't feel like I have to see it in the theater. I want to see it. It looks really funny, I think. I think. Stan Lee got his footprints and handprints added to the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Yeah. Uh, so that's good. Good for Stan Lee. I think, so. the, I think the, the most notable part of that is that he wasn't already there. Like, I, always, I would assume he already I think already he had, had a star. Okay. Which is not as big of a deal, sure. apparently, as the handprints and the footprints. Right, right, right. And this is cool, especially considering he just lost his wife. Yeah. That uh, something maybe I know it's not going to make up for that, but a little uplifting. Uh Entran Enchantress will not return for Suicide Squad 2. I shrug my shoulders. Who cares? Uh, DirecTV <laughs> and Lionsgate released their first Leatherface teaser. This is going to be on DirecTV September 21st. Speaking of DirecTV again. And then it's going to be on other VOD platforms on October 20th. So anybody who wants to can see this in time for Halloween. I think the trailer looks pretty cool. It looked pretty cool. I mean, it... I'm actually surprised it's not going to be in theater. I mean, I guess it's just because of the deal they've worked out to get funding for Why this. did we have to get another prequel? Like, I went and saw Texas Chainsaw Massacre the beginning, which was the pre prequel to the Jessica Bill one. Oh, yeah. I love that movie. Two thumbs up. And, uh, I mean, it the beginning was a good movie. Yeah, I enjoyed I thought. it. I enjoyed I don't think we need another leather Leatherface, excuse me, prequel. No, but... I mean, I'll watch any horror, especially the slashers. When it started, I wasn't sure what to expect from this. When it started, I thought we were going to get an attractive Leatherface. Really? <laughs> Just the way the trailer started. I'm like, Leatherface is going to be this tr attractive, misunderstood guy, is he? So I'm very happy to see, no, he's just a crazy Leatherface. David Lowry, Peach Dragon, Ain't Them Body Saints. When I say Peach Dragon, the new Peach Dragon, obviously. Right came out last summer they want to direct which i have not seen i did see ain't them body saints that's a good movie uh wants to direct tmnt3 so he wants to finish that trilogy wow wow i'm Are surprised they, anyone wants to finish that trilogy i didn't even know they were making a tmnt3 is that like they're, a not, thing? they're not they're oh, not okay well, there's then. no plans for it he's okay. saying he wants to well, uh, well i mean yeah why not right i'd like to direct it too i mean why not just finish the the shitty version of the turtles you know good I mean, money that's the main reason <laughs> uh, yeah well i mean it made it made a profit it, yeah. did, it wasn't like in the negative what i think they, it barely was above water though you said you saw which of these films did you see ain't them body saints that's was the one that's uh takes place in louisiana after hurricane katrina mm -hmm. and it's about kind of poor fan I mean, it's an indie movie like it was nominated for best picture that year 
and uh, Slash Film Cast, Dave Chin, my favorite guy in the world there, recommended it. So I checked it out. That was a great movie. Yeah. So I, I, mean, I want like to see Pete's Dragon. I just hadn't. I mean, what, do you think this guy could fix the trilogy? Uh, what if he comes out and makes Team Anthony? Can anybody yeah. fix this trilogy? Because no, they, they're going to make it stylized. Like it's going to have to fit with the other two. I'd rather see a reboot of TMNT. At this I do point. too. A dark and gritty reboot. Ooh. No, actually, I would like to see it kind of in the vein of Secret of the Ooze. So somewhat serious, but somewhat funny too. Because yeah. TMNT needs to be a little fun, I think. Yeah. Uh, speaking of directors wanting to direct stuff, Neil Blomkamp wants to return to direct Elysium 2. Of course, Blomkamp did District 9 as well as Chappie, which and I've Elysium not seen Chappie. And Elysium 1, yeah. <laughs> Elysium was a really good movie. I enjoyed it. I expected a great to epic film following District 9, so I was disappointed. Okay. You go into that movie not expecting that, not expecting a District 9, which was a Best Picture nomination. I mean, Elysium's good, and there's a lot to say about social injustice and inequality. Maybe not as a hot button of a topic as it was during that time. Yeah. Uh, 20, what did that movie come out? 2013? I Maybe. Think? Yeah, it was somewhere in around there. Uh, Martin Anson did an awesome Mondo poster for it. I'm glad I didn't like the movie enough to have to buy that. <laughs> but uh, I would, I would want to see this, wouldn't you? Yeah. I'm not really super excited about it. No. Uh, let's see. Aladdin has been cast. Yay! Mina Musad, mm-hmm. who I have no idea who he is. That was the idea. Uh, but Naomi Scott, who played Kimberly in Power Rangers, is Jasmine. All right. Yeah. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. She was good as Kimberly. Sure. I yeah. thought maybe besides Billy, she may have been the strongest performance of the five Rangers. Yeah. That's not saying a lot, probably. Uh, I went back and watched that, and it was I enjoyed it when I went back and watched it again. I think of Jasmine, I definitely don't picture her, but... No. No, I picture Kim Kardashian. <laughs> uh, I, all right. Uh, let's see. Walton Goggins, who's on Justified and Vice Principals. He plays Boyd yeah. Crowder. Did you ever watch Justified? Yeah. Uh, so you know Boyd Crowder. He's sure. joining Ant-Man and the Wasp. That's out July 6, 2018. I'm assuming he'll play a villain. He's usually the assume, villain. Yeah. yeah, he's very charismatic. Marvel needs all the charismatic villains they can get. They've been, they've been doing well so far with Guardians Volume 2 and, uh, and Spider-Man Homecoming. Yeah, and the things we hear about Thanos so far, we're yeah. trying oh, yeah. Yeah, upward we're get- in the villain department. Yeah, we're getting so. yeah Jeff Goldblum and Thor, so that's exciting. Yeah, and Hela. Who the hell is Hela? <laughs> <laughs> Remember when I tried to put her on the MCU? Yeah. We, were, we had a pod discussing the villains. I'm like, ah, she wasn't very memorable because she hadn't been in a movie yet. <laughs> All right, Disney has revealed Kylo Ren's new ship, the Silencer. Looks a lot like Darth Vader's TIE Fighter mixed with his ship from the first movie. See, this is a, something I would see, but I haven't I haven't seen a picture of this yet. But that's something I would check out. Looks pretty cool. I okay. mean, I'm not like, oh my god, this is the most badass ship in the history of it, Star it's a, Wars. It's a Tie Fighter, but there's explosions coming out of the side of it. Yeah, <laughs> it's one of the Knights of Icon. <laughs> it's the Sword of the Knights of Icon. <laughs> All right, uh, last bit of rapid fire news: Wonder Woman two not confirmed, but rumored to be out June fifth, twenty twenty. Still don't. They still haven't signed Gal Gadot or Patty Jenkins to extensions uh, i'm assuming that's a no-brainer and that will happen getting patty at least gal gadot i know that's gonna happen yeah uh so all right andrew stokes let's go ahead and get into our featured review of the week which is matt reeves war for the planet of the apes who is child. I don't know. But she was you. She has no one else. We are not savages. Apes fight only to survive. Bad human kill ape. All, all dead now a long time. Long time. Bad humans. Soldier. Years from now, your children will ask you, what did you do in the greatest war? And you can tell them, I fought 
to protect this world. We created this. But now, we will bring an end to their kind. You are impressive. You're smart as hell. You're stronger than we are. But you're taking this all much too personally. So emotional! I do not start this war. As usual, let's start out with some stats from this film. Got to put your glasses on for those I saw. Well, uh, some stats. Uh, 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 this was directed by Matt Reeves, who also directed the last film in the franchise. And he did. It, he also directed Cloverfield. Rotten Tomatoes gave this film a 95%, which is a 5% increase from the last film we watched. <laughs> All right, yeah, so 95% on Rotten Tomatoes. This film was released. July 14, 2017, 140 minutes. Big stars here are Andy Serkis and Woody Harrelson. Of course, Andy Serkis, the great no cap. Circus. 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 Sir? Sir? Sir Andy Serkis. That's how you say his name. Circus? Yeah, Andy Serkis. Circus? Not Circus. I don't know how I pronounce circus. it, but Circus is not sound. That's right. All right. All right. Andy Serkis and Woody Harrelson here. Uh, scored by Michael Giacchino, who did the last film score, as well as Spider-Man Homecoming score. So back-to-back, Michael Giacchino scores on the podcast. 95% on RT, as Andrew Stokes alluded Russia today. to. today. Yeah, we added some, some to it today, like 10 bucks. <laughs> $56.2 million domestically, which is down from the 70 something million that the first film grossed its opening weekend domestically, and it's grossed $113.4 million worldwide so far. Now, I had lofty expectations going into this film yes, because did. the Slash Film review that I read, I just want to uh, read you the title of it. Uh, I, I, I'm not making this up here, okay? And I love Slash Film. Those guys are great. This is uh, reviewed by one of my favorite new writers on their site, Ethan Anderton, also known as Bradford Omen. He's got two names. War for the Planet of the Apes, one of the most significant blockbusters of the decade. So Andrew Stokes, that coming from my favorite website besides THEpicReview.com, that really had me going into this film with monumental expectations, especially considering... The first two. Speaking of that, what's your thoughts on the franchise as far as the original films? Have you seen them? And the Tim Burton film, which we alluded to earlier. Not these newer movies. Right. I have not seen the original one. I'm somewhat familiar with it. You know what I mean? Obviously, there's some very famous lines, some famous scenes from that movie. I'm somewhat familiar with just the plot in general. Um, But I haven't seen them. I mean, really, I'm not familiar with any of the films past the first one. Yeah. I know there's like four or five of them. I kind of want to go back and watch them now. I kind of want to know what they're about, at least. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there was a TV show, right? Which I've, I've seen the first one only of the okay. originals, and I've never seen the Tim Burton film. I've watched like bits and pieces of it on HBO. I've seen the Tim Burton one. I don't remember it being particularly memorable. It's really dark, but I mean, it's Tim Burton. What do you expect? Yeah. So, Mark Wahlberg, though. Love that Wahlberg. Yeah, he's in that. Holy... Marky Mark. Crap, I forgot about that. Yeah. What about the thoughts on the 2011 film starring James Franco, directed by Rupert Wyatt? We saw this one together as well, back mm-hmm. in the day. I'll take your word for it. We did. We were surprised. Yeah. I remember walking out of that being so shocked, because I didn't expect anything from that movie. Yeah, you actually wet yourself. You were so <laughs> what surprised. What a shot. <laughs> that movie, as cliche of me to say, but it did have a ton of heart. Yeah. Which, going in, I yeah. probably didn't expect. Yeah, I wasn't sure what to expect. It looked cool. Yeah. But, I, I it was, mean, it's a good film. It's an epic film. Yeah, it's great. You gave it an epic. Did I? Yeah. 
Sure. On the last, because I I did re-release our retro rise. rewind. Yeah, the first one, yeah, Rise yeah. of the Planet of the Apes, in which you said it was epic. Yeah. You also said that 2014. Yeah. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Would you still agree that that's epic? You just Definitely. rewatched these movies. I think originally I liked the first one better than the second one. Me too. I think so. I'm not. Don't. I'm not 100 percent sure. I guess you can go back and listen. Um, but rewatching them again both this week, I like the second one better. I think I do one. too, but it's not by much. Again, they're completely different films. The first two are definitely they they feel they have a different feel to them. Absolutely, but different directors, different person scoring it. I mean, right, but it's just know. the overall like idea. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The first one, the second one, they're both they both have a lot of heart. They like do. you said, this franchise. But, but the keeps second that. one, the second one's definitely more actiony. And yeah. it's a more it's more mm-hmm. sci fi. But none of these movies, including this one, and I want to get into this in our review, is yeah. like jam packed with action. Right. And and that's some to, for this to captivate audiences, especially for a blockbuster mentality type film. Yeah. Uh, the way it has and not have that much action, I think yeah. that's impressive. And by uh, having these CGI apes as well as like yeah. you know, big important characters in these and they have very important emotional scenes in these movies, you know? So many people, multiple film websites, film podcasts are saying that this is the best film trilogy since Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. Again, I've said it a million times. I don't love Lord of the Rings, but I respect it. Yeah. I'd I'd say the last epic film trilogy was the Nolan Batman movies. You're going to be surprised with what I'm about to say. Oh, Lord. Wow. I told Jerry Reed on the way here. Okay. I'm not giving my rating on this film. I may be, you know, tipping, tipping my your, hand a little yeah. bit here. But I told Jerry Reed, Barbecue 17. The trilogy as a whole. The trilogy as a whole is my favorite and the best film trilogy I've ever seen. Wow. Even above the... And what so no one, no one Batman was your favorite trilogy before this? No, and I won't, I'd probably say Star Wars Okay, was. the original. Yeah, yeah, the original. Of course, yeah. I <laughs> yeah. really love that Phantom Menace. But, I mean... In every one of these, like, I love Nolan, Batman, and Star... That's probably my two favorite trilogies. Back to the Future, even even with Back mm-hmm. to the Future, let's take these three trilogies. They all have a drop-off in the third movie. Yeah. Third film's not bad. No. Uh, I mean, maybe Back to the Future Part 3, that's the biggest drop-off. Dark Knight Rises, I would probably still give an epic to, but it's... Really? I, I would, yeah, but I know you probably wouldn't. But at the same time, it's not as good as the other two. Jedi is not near as good as New Hope or Empire. No. I think we can. Most people agree with that. Yeah. Um, people, kids love them Ewoks though. That from start to finish, this is the best film trilogy I've ever seen. And I think it's my even beyond that, it's my favorite film trilogy of all time. More than the more Nolan than, Batman. More than the live action Ninja Turtles. That's Tur- not a, Turtles well, in a time, trilogy. baby. Yeah. Turtles in time. That was one where the third one dropped off exponentially. <laughs> I barely remember that. I love the first two, though. Yeah, I, even I mean, though they're distinctly different. I own films. like the I own those three and the animated one on Blu-ray. The animated was, one's underrated. I like the animated one. I still haven't gone back and watched the third one yet. I've only seen it like once. Ever. What? Uh, I need uh, to see it again. Um, I may have to agree with you here. Really? Yeah. So that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, it's it's I'm hard hard pressed to find a trilogy that I like more than this trilogy as a whole. And most of it's CG characters. Yeah. Which is insane. Yeah. But they're memorable. Yeah. I mean Caesar, Koba, Rocket, I don't Maurice. Any of those people. No, Shut up. Yeah, Blue, Blue Eyes. I'm pretty sure his son's name is. Yeah, which is weird that that his son didn't get like a distinct name. Now his yeah. other son's Cornelius. Cornelius who was born in the second one. Right. I don't know. See, I don't think he knew his. Uh, I don't think Caesar knew. You know, obviously we're talking about uh, the past ones still. Yeah. I don't think if Caesar knew his mother's name and they call her Bright Eyes. Yeah. I'm not sure he ever knew her name. I'm not sure if he found that out or not. Because I thought maybe Blue Eyes was a reference to that. And I don't think they ever mention his, this. I don't think they ever mention his wife's name. No, I don't think. Maybe in the credits you can find it or something. I don't I, think it's in the film. They at don't. All. I mean, really, the only two of the four family members of Caesar is Caesar and Cornelius, his second son, that are explicitly named. The and, wife, unless they unless don't Blue name. Eyes isn't his name. I mean, his first son. 
tweet is. I'm pretty that, sure his. I'm pretty sure his first. And they call him Blue Eyes, and they do it in sign language, and yeah. Blue Eyes is capitalized. Yeah. So it's like I, I I assume that is his name. So assuming, but assuming that's not his name, then yes, those would be the only two explicitly named. Tweet but I'm pretty is sure at the Eyes. real Brad Bell. R e e l Brad Bell. If you know the name, because some of the of Caesar's some first of the apes, son. some of the apes have these kind of out there names, and especially mm-hmm. like in this one, we have an ape named Winter. We have one named Lake. What was her name? Lake. That was uh, Blue was Eyes' girlfriend. Right. But I was just making sure that was at her first. Name. I thought that was a male ape. I'm like, wow, they're really you know yeah thinking outside the box here. But no, it was a female ape. That was pretty clear. Come on, we got. I wouldn't have had a problem with. I'm just saying. Yeah. Okay, so let's get into our non-spoiler <laughs> section here. Well, the, the humans are attacking the apes. It's like, why don't you leave us apes alone? You don't like talking to apes. It's like, no, it's because of that one gay ape. <laughs> there, there is a lot of political messaging in this film. Oh. I will say this. I went back and listened to that, uh, our podcast on the second apes movie, Donna, the Planet of the Apes. And there's that scene where Caesar throws the gun into the water. I'm yeah. like, subtle gun control uh, message, guys. You're like, no. Are you crazy? <laughs> all right. but That's is, all right. Would you agree? I don't want to get into it just yet, but there is political messaging in this movie. Uh, I'm not sure I would agree with okay. that. Okay. All right. We'll get there. There's some... I, I, I don't think so. Okay. Let's, okay. let's hold off because I think I, probably better discussed in spoilers. Okay. Now. What are your initial thoughts on this movie? Uh, it was really good. I mean, I, was, I went into it expecting high things. Um, it kind of slipped on. I haven't seen this any of these movies since the first one. I'm sorry, the, the first time I saw the second one. I haven't I haven't revisited this franchise at all. Um, and it's kind of an underrated franchise. So when I was making my top ten list, um, it was three on my list. But I mean, I considered Derek, there, and Homecoming. There were there are parts where I considered putting it number one. I think it landed number five. Wow. Um, so, wow, wow. (laughs) Um, but, um, I was, I was going in anticipating it. I wasn't, I don't think it's hyped as you were. Um, It killed me to have to wait till this Thursday to see it. And I'm glad we did though. I mean, I was at the beach. I couldn't have win anyway. I'm glad we, did you see it twice? You did not. So you asked us, so Jerry and I, were you at the beach I know you didn't. I didn't want to tell you this until after the movie. We had seen it. I mean, he and I went and saw this movie. You're kidding. I am kidding. I'm just joking uh, with you. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't have cared, but it's like, no, I know. Oh man! All right, <laughs> let me get my train of thought back after that. My initial reaction is, I freaking love this movie. Yeah. I mean, I said it. I was probably we were probably about three quarters through this movie. I turned to Andrew and said, "I love this movie." Yeah, and I was just hoping like the final act wasn't just going to be a complete letdown. Yeah, and um, maybe you think it is. I don't know based on the look you're giving me. Uh, I loved it. I thought it was the best third film in a trilogy that I've, I've ever seen. Better than Terminator Three. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what's the third Lord of the Rings movies? Uh, what is it? Return, Return of, the King? of the King. I know yeah. most people would probably say that. Uh, I mean, I just can't get into those. Enough of I me mean, saying I don't like Lord of the Rings. Okay? Have you seen all the endings, though? Yeah, there's like three versions. They're all like four hours I don't long. mean that. I just mean the theatrical version. Like, I feel like there's five endings to that film, which I mean, is something everybody says I would, know. But Would you agree? I was talking to a friend of mine, Will Maney, uh, who's done a couple podcasts with me in the past. And he said, the thing that I admire most about this franchise is the distinct feeling of all three films. Yeah. I mean, I would say this one has more of a feeling from two to three than we Absolutely. do from yeah. one to two. Yeah. But it does feel like, like you can feel that time's passed. You can feel that it ha- this is a war movie. Well, I would say of these three films, one, one of the, the better parts of them for me is I feel like you could watch, I wouldn't suggest it, but you could watch this new one having not watched the other two and still really enjoy this movie. You'll enjoy it more having seen the other ones. I feel like each of these movies you could watch having and not watch any of the others and really enjoy them almost as much as somebody who's watched the other ones. I agree. Yeah. And that again, that is something that most film series do not offer that, you know, the individuality of a film within a franchise or within a trilogy. Parts parts is almost to be continued, the the dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Because yeah. at the end it's like, no, we're at war now. And like you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it definitely opens it up. But I mean, you could kind of say the first one does that too, with with Caesar 
leading this ape rebellion. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, so it does have it's. It feels like a war film to me. Yeah. Which again, the, it's more like the end of the second one, but I still I can't really differentiate why the second one feels different. The, but it the second does. one it feels it feels like a war film, but it it feels like a it's like a post apocalyptic. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like it almost feels like uh, a frontier humans versus like Native Americans. You know what I mean? It yeah. kind of has that kind of feel to it. Um, and it's it, it, and this one is it's definitely it's more like a uh, just like you said like a war film like two able bodied groups going at it. One connection of this film is, I'm going to spoil the first two Planet of the Apes movies here. When I say the first two, the first two Andy Serkis ones. Right, Rise and Dawn. Yeah. Uh, Kova, he died at the end of the second film. Caesar killed him. Yeah. But Kova is an ape that was experimented on, tormented by humans, never saw the good side of humans. And he's some, Caesar has this rule, ape will not kill ape. Yeah. Apes stronger together, right? Yeah. It's a theme throughout the, yeah, the whole branch thing together, yeah. hand symbol. A theme that runs throughout all three of these films. Mm-hmm. And the fact that he had to kill Koba mm-hmm. haunts him. Yeah. And I found it interesting because you see in the trailers, you see apes helping the humans here. And you're like, huh, wonder why. Yeah. And they, this is not a big spoiler, they reveal very early on that those were the followers of Koba. Yeah. And they're pretty much getting back at Caesar by helping the humans. They call them donkeys. The humans do. Well, I guess they call those the apes that help the humans well. donkeys. Yeah. That was, it was a little odd, I guess. I, I, I wanted to, see, I wish it would have been maybe explained a little bit more because Koba hated the humans. So it's weird that the followers of Koba now work for the humans. I guess it's like. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. I know he hated the humans too. I feel I like guess that's they hate, he hated Caesar more. I get it. I like it. that makes sense for the humans yeah. to want to work with these apes. The enemy of my, of my enemy is my friend. But like they, this is like they were also my enemy. The humans, you know what I mean? They were the ones that really didn't trust it. And it, it's it seems like they were almost like super petty because it's hard to believe that Caesar would not invite these other apes back into the fold. And it seems like they were all gorillas. No, nah, the, the 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 early on, uh, there's the one donkey who's in the tree. Oh yeah, and yeah. he's pointing. Out I forgot he's... about. But otherwise, I I think it just focuses more on that one gorilla. No, because you remember, um, I don't want to get too much into it because it's kind of spoiler. There's a group of them with uh, pails of water. Yeah, some of the donkeys, and th- those are definitely not gorillas. Yeah. yeah, I remember that now, and we're gonna get in especially to that opening battle scene and spoilers. Andy Serkis. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about this guy. I mean, he does live action stuff too. He was uh, Ulysses Claw. He's going to be him in Black Panther. He was him oh, in that's Age right. of Ultron. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, but I mean, he's most famously known for playing Gollum, right? Probably Gollum. the most famous. Lord yeah. of the Rings again. Famous mocap <laughs> performance ever, probably. Yeah. Um, he's also uh, with Snoke and. Uh, oh, yeah. He is Snoke. I completely yeah. forgot about that. And this. He's is, everywhere, man. He's man, everywhere. I mean, I think that this guy deserves an Oscar nomination. Well, it's, I, I heard that they were discussing adding like a some sort of like motion capture performance category or he something. He should be nominated for best actor. Yeah. So, I mean, that's he's doing the voice of Caesar. Yeah. He's doing He's all, doing more than just the voice. Yeah. He's doing the performance. He's of doing Caesar. the whole performance. Yeah. He is Caesar. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I mean it is just this is, you know, we always bring up these certain performances of the past decade, and a lot of it's superhero stuff like Heath Ledger, Joker, Robert Downey Jr., Iron Man, what have you. And this has been a franchise, and in particular this performance, that, I don't know, sometimes it seems forgotten or gets dropped by the way. It's not as talk. If you're a film aficionado like us, yes, yeah, talked about a lot more. But even I, then, I think it's pretty underrated. Yeah, but the average audience, like even though these movies do okay, I mean, it's not got too much buzz around this franchise. He deserve. I think he deserves an Oscar nom. I know that may be outrageous considering this mocap here. Absolutely not. Because I mean, if you look at the mocap, if you, it's not. It's it's more involved than it used to be. Yeah. I mean that 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 is him. He's doing the performance for this thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. I mean, obviously the greatest mocap actor alive. Like that's not even debatable. 
Uh, so what did you think about his foil in this movie? Of course, we'll talk more about this in spoilers, but Woody Harrelson here, who is the colonel, who is um, leading a... I won't get into it too much here. Leading a certain group of humans here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The humans, they were, they were alluded to in um, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Yeah. They talked about them in Dawn at the end. Um, it's, it's the humans that answered the call of the humans... Um, in Dawn uh, North, right? They mentioned in Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, oh, we've we've reached a military group and they're coming to aid us, and it's yeah. this group. But this is they're almost a defective military group because they have conflict with the overall. It seems when I say conflict, they seem to be at heads with the U.S. military. I don't think that's too much of a spoiler. Um, well, I mean, it's also it's very we don't know what the u.s army really looks like we don't know we don't the know. status of the government exactly like you know so i want to go I, never mind i can't say what i was about to say okay uh before we risk spoiling this uh incredible film for yeah. anybody let's go ahead and uh roll the reel forward to spoilers for matt reeves war of the planet of the apes starting now Okay, okay, Andrew Stokes. Yeah. Let's just pick up with our Woody Harrelson conversation. Okay, he chews the scenery in this movie. Yeah, big well, time. Yeah. Well, you said he was the uh, Caesar's biggest adversary. Yeah, and I think but, I mean besides the ghost of Coba. Well, or, or, or wait, yeah, the ghost of Coba. Like really, he's his own biggest adversary in this. And like they hate within Caesar is really his biggest adversary. He's so torn. I mean, he's always been torn between humanity Mm -hmm. and just apes conquering everything. Yeah. Because he had such terrible experience with humanity Mm -hmm. and such great experience with humanity. Going back to James Franco's character and even his interaction with the Jason Clark character in uh, the second movie. And then in Dawn, he's also had the same experience, but with uh, apes now. Yeah. So it's like he knows humans and apes practically the both same thing. Both good, both bad. Right. Yeah, it's not both misunderstood in some ways. It's not the species that makes the you know the ape or makes the man. It, yeah. It's the character within a person. Yeah. And that again, that's a through line in all these films as well. Yeah. Uh, but probably my favorite scene of this movie, and um, I guess there was two meetings between uh, Woody Harrelson and Caesar. There was an initial one where he finally meet. They've been tracking Caesar and all this stuff, so he finally gets his hands on Caesar, and he starts bringing up all these historical references. Like, oh, I was uh, thinking there's one earlier than that, the very brief meeting between the two that you saw in the trailers. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. But, thought, but there's this but, meet where he's talking about like you know Custer and Sitting Bull and you yeah, know all this Napoleon. stuff. Napoleon. Yeah, these are that was a cool little reference. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the scene where he invites Caesar up to his quarters mm-hmm. and uh, the emotion in Caesar's eyes yeah. for a CG mocap character. Yeah. I mean, it's freaking, yeah, it's epic. You like, don't, you don't think these about these characters as CG characters. No, like you, you get really... caught up within yeah. this world and they are, I mean, they're walking upright, they're riding a horse. I know they were doing some of this in the last film, but I mean, they have truly evolved. Like there's more, not all apes are talking, but more than just Caesar are speaking now. Yeah. Uh, Cause Maurice is speaking, this new ape they encounter well, speaking. So there was some speaking in Dawn too. Yeah. Maurice spoke in Dawn as well. But not, he doesn't speak as much, right? Yeah, I think I think the only thing I remember Maurice saying was when in in Dawn is when the Caesar gets shot. Yeah. He looks at the humans and he says, "Run." I remember that. Oh, and like, good. yeah, and I think that's the only thing he says. But Koba talks a little bit as well, and I think a lot of them in general say like they yell, they say like "no" and "go" and stuff like that. Very that, limited speech. That scene where they meet and they're ha- Woody Harrelson's delivering a lot of exposition here. But it's kind of, it's irony because he killed Caesar's son, yeah, and he kills C- the 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 oldest son, Blue Eyes, Blue Eyes, yeah, and he kills the wife yep. of Caesar, and it turns out Woody Harrelson has lost his son, he's yeah. killed his own son because this disease has evolved yeah. into basically, 
devolving humans. Right. He's kind of just sapping the intelligence. Before, in the first one, this virus gave more intelligence. And it killed humans. They got the flu. Yeah. And the survivors, you know, they were genetically immune, is what they say in the second film. Yeah. But here, it's like some are losing the ability to talk, like the main girl who's in this movie. Now, it's worth pointing out, though, that this is a theory. Like, he doesn't know this for a fact that yeah. this is what's but happening. But it is but... shown that certain people have lost the ability to, to talk. Right. Like his son, and even him later in the film. What's, yeah, it's, it's, it's told. The only two we see are the little girl and that one soldier who was bleeding out. Yeah, yeah. And Woody Harrelson. At the oh, end. yeah, that's sure, yeah. But he talks about how this tragedy had to put down his own son and all this, and like... In this interaction, yeah. even though these two, this ape and this man hate each other, yeah. you can kind of see that they share this this bond in some weird, twisted, screwed up way. Yeah. Well, that's one of the, one of the things about the, this whole trilogy, with the exception of um, the, the Brian Cox and Malfoy's character from the first one, yeah. a lot of the villains, you, you understand them. And and Koba, like it's almost sad when Koba dies in the in the in the second one. Even though he's done these awful things, he tried to kill Caesar, and he's he's ruining the relationship between humans and apes. It's like you understand his issue. You understand where his hate comes from, and it's almost sad to see him be killed. Yeah. And then in this one, like Woody Harrelson's character, like he, he, you understand he, the motivation right, right. He, like, he kills he kills caesar's son and mother or i'm sorry son and wife and it's like that's a bad thing because we like them we've gotten to know them in another film yeah. but it's like he's almost not doing that bad of stuff he's doing very hard cold stuff but he's tr- like the, as far as far as we the audience like we got some um we got we have knowledge kind of of the other films and we assume even though this is like a reboot we assume it's leading back to the Planet of the Apes. Yeah. And it's like, we know that humans have kind of de-evolved in those films. And it's like, so we almost, so we know, we kind of know like, oh, we can, we can infer that he is correct, that this, the virus is now mutated and, and doing bad things. So it's like, he's quarantining and he had to kill his own son to do it. It's like, he's almost not a bad guy, except for he's, he's, he's turned the apes and the, and the slaves and, and killed these characters we care about. You Speaking know? of bad guy, uh, the scene, the movie starts out with pr- maybe the most, besides the climax, probably the most action of the whole film, right? Yeah. You have this attack by the soldiers on an ape complex. Caesar's yeah. not there, but he arrives in the aftermath, right? And yeah. he spares four soldiers. He spares mm. their life, which yeah. comes back to bite him in the ass. Uh, yeah. But yeah. here's the thing with that. Mm-hmm. It from starting out to where Caesar, especially where you see him in the second film with yeah. Jason Clark, but even the beginning of this film where he's sparing people's life, yeah, to the point that he, I won't say he's fallen toward the dark side or anything, but he's kind of embraced hate and revenge so much, yeah, that he's gonna kill this guy at all cost, even if it cost his life. Woody Harrelson. Yeah, kill Woody Harrelson. Yeah, see, I almost didn't like that, though. I didn't wish, like what? I wish at the very end of the film, when the apes are finally escaping, he let go. And he he didn't go after Woody. But he I, didn't kill him, though. That's well, important but he was, to But know. he was going to. Yeah, so he gets to... Well, and he, go ahead. He, he, he didn't kill him, but that's because he almost left him to a worse fate, even though Woody Harrelson winds up killing himself. And he knows he's going to... Yeah. It's like... He finds Woody Harrelson. He's in a drunken stupor. The yeah. The disease has took hold of him. He cannot speak. We get this very intense scene with Caesar holding the gun to his head. Yeah. And I, again, he lets him face a far worser fate yeah. than death. Yeah. He, he, he commits he did, suicide. Right. So it's like, it almost is like he kind of got his revenge. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, I almost kind of wish he had let go of that. Because it got him in so much trouble in this film and put, like... Everything he he's Koba. everything he's built up to this point, you know, it put all of that at jeopardy, and he still went after him again at the end. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I almost kind of wish he didn't. And we just saw Woody Harrelson. Like we, the audience, have this closure that we know Woody Harrelson succumbed to this fate and wound up killing himself. But that Caesar just—it was something he left open 
you know what I mean? And you can look at it that way. I completely understand your point. I understand the whole thought process between leaving him to this worse fate than yeah. death, and he was probably going to commit suicide anyway. Right. But Caesar still wanted that satisfaction to kill him. He did. You could see it in his eyes, but he didn't do it. He didn't do it. Yeah. So, I mean. He did and he didn't. He, he was going to. But he found out Woody Harrelson's so basically So Woody Harrelson's dead. in there. Let's say he's just drunk, okay? He's not, like, have this disease wreaking havoc on him. Yeah. Do you think he kills him? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I think so. I don't know if he does. I don't know. And that's just... And I completely understand your point of view. Yeah. But that's just based on me wanting to believe that Caesar didn't fall that far. Yeah. Even though, I guess, everything in this film indicates that he, he probably did. did. Yeah. Or he did. But I don't know. Well, we also That's the last half. But full. but speaking of, he 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 let that soldier go. Typical kind of scenes at the beginning of the film. Yeah. And near the end of this film, that soldier, you think, okay, the soldier is gonna like help him or something. Maybe that soldier is gonna kill him. Yeah. That soldier comes back and he's gonna kill Caesar. Yeah. And it's and like the donkey gorilla. The helps donkey him out. Yeah. There. The donkey has to help him out, and it's like, wow, like this guy was really just gonna kill. Him. And I guess he kind of did at the end. I mean the. It's so weird the type of authoritarian style regime that Woody Harrelson has. That they seem like a rogue government group that's they, very nationalistic, but they have the American flag. Then they have like their their logo, the Alpha me. Omega on yeah. there. Yeah, they, they're like a cult, spray painted on the American they're, they're flag. They're like a cult. He's he's quotes scripture a couple times, and uh, he has the Alpha Omega that they branded onto their soldiers. They branded onto the donkeys. Yeah. Um, he, he wears a cross, I believe. He definitely has a cross in his um, in his quarters, in his private area. So, like, there's definitely, like, this religious bent to them. They yeah. feel like they're on a crusade almost. Yeah. Like they're, they're, I mean, they're, I mean, they're, I mean, like they're cleansing, Almost you know, in the way the of, humans. like, uh, the Branch Davidians or the Westboro Baptist Church. Or, yeah. You know, something. I'll, did you ever see Red State? Kind of like how they yeah, captured yeah. the Westboro Baptist Church. Yeah. But, I mean, not... A direct one-to-one comparison but something right, right. like that yeah uh did you feel that this film lacked considering the movie was called war for the planet of the apes did yeah. you feel that it lacked action no because amos i want to say there's so this, much going on amos you know? of the just being amos podcast only gave this a good and a half and he fell asleep at the end what he felt that this movie got really slow in the middle i never felt that but then no. again i wasn't expecting an all-out war for two hours knowing yeah. this franchise right. the way that we do it does almost change gears a little bit it, it, it turns it starts like this kind of adventure type movie and turns into this like as a concentration camp yeah. movie, like Escape from uh, Alcatraz type, not Alcatraz, but whatever. Um, it turns into this, you know, this. It's all t- like the second half of this movie all like takes place in like the one spot. You yeah, know what I mean, like very contained in the sec in the second half of the film. Yeah, we we mentioned this whole like nationalistic religious bent thing to these uh, Woody Harrelson led cult. Slash army militant guys. Yeah. Uh, okay. Andrew Stokes. Yeah. Tell us what they're trying to do. Like, what does he have? He has the apes basically working in concentration camps, right? Yeah. And what does he have in the apes do? Go ahead, say it. They're, they are just like in the Matt Damon film from this year. They're building a wall. They're building a wall. And uh, they, I don't think they build a wall in that Matt that, Damon movie. They just already had a wall. But yeah. Whatever. Uh, anyway, they're building a wall. They're building a wall. They made them. They made the wall out of solar panels, and you could see through the wall. Let me say this. No, they did. <laughs> All right. All right. So we have a white, yeah, right wing, religious, yeah. nationalistic leader. Was he right wing? Uh, I would say he's nationalistic. I guess Which he, is, tends to be right wing. I guess he's kind of right wing. Yeah. Leaning right. Let's just say that. Yeah. I suppose. B- building a wall. Yeah. To keep people out. Keep Americans out. Which they are Americans, but they're defective, right? We mentioned that. And apparently, right. they have intel. They know, because he reveals it to Caesar in that convo. Yeah. That they know that the, the U.S. military is on their way. Yeah. Because the, or what we assumes the u.s military right yeah. and uh or another yeah another 
military branch, an another official group. branch, right? Maybe an official branch, maybe okay. another. Who knows? Yeah, we'll, we'll probably never. The know. governor's leading them. Uh, but now I'll, I'll admit it was bullshit when I said in the episode thirty-three when Caesar throws the gun in the water, and I'm like, "Gun control allegory, guys." Yeah, and you're like, "No," but I do think Matt Reeves. And again, I know they were writing, working on this movie, but again, they were probably doing it close to when Trump announced his. King. I think there are political allegories here. Do with them what you will. You don't have. It's almost kind of like with the vulture in Spider Man, that whole the forgotten man. Yeah. If it's there and you want to see it, you'll see it, especially if you think politically. I don't know if it's in your face. I think this is more in your face politically than the vulture was. The the weird thing is. It's just weird that they have them building a wall, I guess. Yeah. Because, like, they they know that the military group coming after them is a has advanced modern weaponry. They yeah. Have missiles. They have helicopters, and they're building a wall mostly out of like wood and stuff. You know it what I mean? It would make more sense. I mean, probably not even so. Excuse me, but I guess it'd make a little more sense if they were trying to keep, like, the apes out or somebody with, like, primitive technology. So one of the things I thought that might happen, because throughout this film, or at one point in the film... thought James Franco was going to come back. At one point during this film, we see that um, there, there are other apes out there. It's not just Caesar and his crew and the apes that he let out that the virus has spread to other apes Possibly around the world. An older ape from the Sierra Nevada Zoo. Yeah. They run into who can talk. Right. So it's going to be Caesar. Right. So it's hinted that, okay, maybe maybe all the apes in the world now are intelligent and have been awoken, if you will. And it's been an awakening. And I was wondering if maybe this other group, like they were expecting other humans, but maybe other humans were going to come. And then maybe another group of apes were going to come and attack them or something. Um, it seems like you're in a much larger world if that happens. Yeah. Especially maybe sitting up stuff. But um, I don't know. What what would you have the apes doing with, if they're not building the wall, though? Like, it just seemed like, okay, this is the... We're going to have the apes, you know, as slave labor, build a that wall. That did like, seem a little pigeonholed in there, which makes me think, was Matt Reeves trying to make some political point? But my, my, my thing is, like, what else are you going to have them do? I don't know. I mean, just dig holes or something just do a bunch of bull crap just to torture them there's that intense scene and i mean you don't want to give them shovels yeah the stuff i guess i give them give some of them picks excuse me they're in a concentration camp pretty much and there's that scene where the donkey beats caesar yeah that's really intense yeah and Caesar is kind of portrayed as this Christ-like figure among the apes. Yeah. And I know they had done it to other apes, put them up on yeah, like... Almost, almost more like Moses, really. Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess that would be a better comparison yeah. biblically. But how they have him up there where everybody can see him, oh, yeah. that he's just another ape, that he's not above anybody. Oh, uh, yeah. And that's just... Koba's... He could be there Judas almost? I guess Winter was Judas. Yeah, Winter was Judas in this one. It's the white ape that betrayed him. I was so disappointed because when they showed this white ape at the beginning of the film, I'm like, oh, I'm like, this is gonna be my favorite ape now. Like, I just love to look at it. They call, he was cool. And they called him Winter, and it's like, and then the way Winter is uh, killed, it's like, wow, that was intense. Caesar chokes him out, chokes him out, suffocates him, him to death. And yeah. see, this is only, at least for my money, the, my knowledge anyway, the second ape besides Koba that Caesar's killed, right? That we know of, yeah. I mean, maybe some other stuff happened off. How long off screen? How long do you think this war's been going on for? Did it say? It said two years since the last so film. The, I love how they opened this film with yeah. almost like a Star Wars like crawl, but well, it wasn't a crawl. I mean, it wasn't they, a crawl at all. Yeah. You know, uh, but you know, it had a description of the last two films, and it had like their title, the key word in their title, like rise. Yeah, and then dawn. dawn, bold, and then it turned red, war. and then it just faded to war, yeah. red. And I, that was in for just words on a screen. Yeah. Kind of felt like what we were going into. Yeah. That was intense. Yeah. Now, it seems like you have a little problem, maybe more so than I do, with the third act of this film. Uh, is that true? Am I right in thinking that? No, not that? really. Okay. I'm just making faces at you the whole time. I, I like the third act just fine in this movie. Yeah, I thought the movie's pretty solid from yeah. start to finish. Um, it is interesting, though, when the other group shows up 
and they 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 pretty much with yeah, the help of, of humans, Caesar, yeah. the other human military group. I'm yeah. assuming is the U.S. Army, but that's a, a broad leap on my. I part. think I, I'm not sure that term means anything anymore at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, yeah. With the help of Caesar blowing that gas tank, Woody Harrelson's been dead a little bit at this point. So you have the fight between two military groups, the Harrelson group and the other groups who, who is in all white. Then you have the apes trying to escape, yeah. right? Great and escape. The great escape. That's, yeah. that's and then the, that's the, the add on that, there's an a- avalanche that starts to fall. Yeah. So you have Mother Nature playing in the mix, too. I love how this took place in what I'm assuming is the Sierra Nevada Mountains, same place where, because uh, we're in California. Yeah. Same place where uh, the Donner Party, you know, yeah. all that stuff took place with the cannibalism and whatnot. Anyway, whenever Caesar's standing there, and he sees, okay, I've beaten the Woody Harrelson section. They're done for here. Yeah. He's almost happy to see the other group, but then they all t- turn their gu- guns toward him. Yeah. And you're like, oh my, are they just going to slaughter this dude? Is this how Caesar's going to go out? Yeah. And the avalanche comes, and he doesn't get to safety, but he escapes for the time being. Yeah. So um, let's talk about the very end of this movie. Well, right before, go ahead. The, Part of the escape, like they start the, the great ape escape. The uh, the Woody Harrelson's forces, the Alpha Omegas, they start um, shooting at the apes, and it's like I, there was just a, there was just one part where I'm like, I'm pretty sure the apes, like it seemed like like right on the edge of the wall. It's like have they not already gotten farther away than this? There was just one little weird part where it's like they seem very close to this wall, yeah, and did. they seem like they they're like they've. They, they seem like they're still going when they should have already moved some. Yeah. So, but whatever. All right. So, Caesar nitpick. gets them to the promised land, to the desert, whatever. Israel, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, a, a place where, at least for the time being, the film leads us to believe that they're safe. Yep. And uh, he had been shot with an arrow from, ironically, the guy he saved. Yeah. And he had been bleeding out this whole time. And you, like, right before you see, you know he's been bleeding, but I don't know if I necessarily thought he was going to die in that moment. No, because I kind of got the impression, I thought they maybe been traveling for some days. But when yeah. they get there, it feels like, oh, they've been traveling for maybe a day. Yeah. Like, it doesn't seem like they've been traveling that long, I would assume. Yeah. Without getting this injury looked at, you know? I don't know. And, uh... See, you know, the apes are excited. The little... What about the little girl? How'd you feel about her? Oh, the human girl? Uh, yeah, and in all three of these movies, another thing we have is a, a human who... I mean, we have bad humans, we have good humans, but a human that builds a relationship with Caesar. Yeah. And he sees the good of humanity always through a human in every film, whether it's James Franco, Jason Clark, or this little girl. Yeah. And uh, at first I was worried, because I remember seeing her in the trailer, and when they got, I was like, oh, that little girl's just going to get in the way, this is going to be stupid, but no. She played a significant role because she, while Caesar's being, uh, when he's captured by the Alpha and the Omega, she brings him water and food, sneaks in there, and gives the doll to yeah. him that Harrelson takes, that gives Harrelson the disease yeah. that she has. Now, she's interesting Clever. because she seems to not be stupid. Like, Woody Harrelson is surmised. Like, uh, yeah. Well, he was also, yeah, he was doing he that. He was drunk. He was like a zombie. <laughs> but he kind of surmised that, you know, not only did they lose the ability to speak, but it's making them dumb. Yeah. And she wasn't the, dumb. She didn't seem dumb at all. So it, maybe it's kind of a hint that he doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah. And he's killing these his own son and humans for really no reason. That the virus is making, it's still giving them a hard life. They can't speak anymore. But, I mean, isn't completely... It kind of it hints that he doesn't know what he's talking about. And it's not as bad as they thought. Yeah, because they say they have scientists who know more about it. Yeah. He, he doesn't... He's not a man of science. He's a man of faith. Yeah. And that's that's portrayed here. Yeah. Uh, but let's get to that ending scene. So they... Um, you want to say something Well, I want to talk about the little girl just a little bit more. Okay. Because I'm, I'm, I'm curious what you... What your idea is here. Um... We see that scene with Luke, uh, Luca, the gorilla that dies. Yeah, and she, early on, and she tears up. She gives him the flower back. Mm-hmm. Now I I saw that scene, and then we I think back to the scene where Caesar and his little group of his three others kill the one person that's with this little girl in that little village, 
And she... I assume maybe that's her dad, but we don't know. Exactly, because she stares at this person, but there's no, like, big tearful scene. And I was thinking at the time, I'm like, oh, they're going to find out that this guy kidnapped her or something. But it's by the end of the film, it's like, I'm not really sure he really could have been a good guy protecting her. Because he's killed so quickly. He he has the Alpha Omega brand on him, I remember. So he Don't definitely you think maybe he's a defector, and based on that's the exposition what, of Harrelson, that's what I'm thinking now. He's a defector. They were going to kill this little girl, whether he's related to her or not, and he was her protector. And so it's kind of like, oh crap! Like they killed this guy, this really great guy. Well, he's going to pull a gun on him, which I mean, well, I, it's I understand, understandable why they killed him. Yeah, yeah. And, but, and that's a cool scene because Caesar doesn't blink an eye. Just straight to murders this guy. You know what I mean? Again, this well, is mur- kinda murder, maybe not murder. The arc he was going to pull a gun on him. But the arc he, of Caesar is kind of sad. It's yeah. a tragic one. Yeah. He had he had no qualms about it. Normally, you feel like Caesar would have uh, he would have had a hard time. Like He, he would have done what needed to be done, but he would have like, oh, man, I wish I didn't have to kill a human. At that point, he seemed like he did not care at all. Yeah. Didn't want to bring the little girl along. He was just, he was out for vengeance. But Maurice, being the voice of compassion here, yeah. brings the little girl. I love Maurice. He's in all three movies. That's another thing I was going to say about this movie. Even though it felt grand in scale, I mean, yeah. it's a war movie, it still felt intimate because yeah. you had mainly our stories revolving around Caesar, Maurice, and Rocket. Yeah. Who are three and of Luke the. A yeah, three of the original inhabitants of right. the cage. Rocket the was Rocket movie. the one that was in charge at the sanctuary at first. Yeah, and Caesar challenged him. Yeah, that's Rocket, right? Yeah. Okay. And his son was Ash. Who Ash was was by Koba. Yeah. yeah, and he's like, you know, um, no, his son was killed at, by a human at the beginning of the movie, right? His son shot by a human, and Rocket still like Caesar says we we're okay with the humans, we're okay with the humans, and then. When the apes are taken over the human, human settlement, Koba t- tells Ash, who's healed now, to kill a human, and Ash is like, "No, oh no, he Caesar wouldn't him want this." The, yeah, yeah okay, and Koba takes him now. and throws him down to his death. Yeah. So, and then that's when you you also hear in this movie a big, sadly, a thing that draws Caesar with Rocket is Rocket says, "I know what it's like to lose a son." Yeah. So the fact that we're following these three and the little girl and they. They run into that ape from the Sierra Nevada Zoo. I mean, it does feel intimate while yeah. being grand in scale. What do you think of that, whatever his name was, the, the talking ape, the one who mostly he didn't sign? He was just enough comedic relief. He was, he, he was only, I, I'm not sure I want to say he was comedic relief. He wasn't T.J. Miller in Transformers. <laughs> right, he was no Jar Jar. There was the one scene with the binoculars. That was funny. Well, yeah, but I'm, I, I'm at the time I'm thinking, like, careful – Careful here, because this movie doesn't need a comic relief character. No. Like I think, it, I think he was just kind of a kooky character, this nomadic, he's seen too much type of guy. Um, he didn't bother me. They no, I'm saying the he, character, but. there was that, that one scene. I was afraid that they were going to go like overboard with him. Yeah. But it's like, nope they they did it. They did it right. Oh, he wasn't too much. That's interesting is I don't know if you noticed at the very beginning of the movie is showing the gear of the uh the troops and they all have like ape references on their back yeah. like one has bedtime for bonzo which okay. was the reagan ronald reagan movie in which he became friends with an ape and there was another ape movie there too they mentioned king well, kong's reference they call him kongs and they call caesar king kong which yeah. is cool um in in one of the tunnels i think you may have been using the restroom at this point on there's graffiti on one of the tunnels under the camp said uh ape apocalypse now Oh, wow. Yeah. And there was another one written on... I can't recall it, but I have this pre-ordered on 4K Blu-ray on Amazon. Yeah. And Abby will not be canceling this. We'll see. It's been pre-ordered for like a week, even though... Because I had the other two, and I expected this to be a really good I rented the second one uh, the other day to to rewatch, and I wish I had just ordered it and bought it. Oh, maybe you can just order it when you order the third one or whatever, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, let's. I know I've tr- I've tried to get here, but we've been coming Sorry, back. Yeah. It's so, no, it's fine. It's such. Uh, it's a rich film. Yeah. Uh, the scene in which he gets them to the promised land, and you f- pretty much find out right then and there. Going in, I thought Caesar might die, but until we see that he's been bleeding out, it didn't hit me that he would. Yeah. And 
is sad, man. It I didn't is. cry, I, but I, I kind of welled misty. up a little misty. bit. Yeah. Because we've been with this character since 2011. When that's happening, I'm thinking of baby him, oh, younger no, than James me, Franco. Me too. And I'm like, oh, God. Like, we've been with him his entire life. And we I've started seen all three of these movies with you, yeah. by the way. We started the, the film with, like, his mother, and we've seen him since Birth his mother was death. killed trying to protect him. And yeah, sad, man. I mean, and the way he dies, I mean, he just. You know, he's he's spent, he's bled out. He, he gave everything to start this ape. You know what I mean? It's such he a gave weird, everything for his people. It's such a weird franchise because we know that this is not a good result for humans. But we're rooting for the apes. But we're rooting for that's, the apes. That shows you how well done this franchise is. Yeah. Um, Matt Reeves. I mean, I can't not wait to see what he does with Batman. But I like how Marie says, you know, your son will know who you were. Because yeah. his son's a baby at this point, Cornelius. He's a little, second he's a little older now, but yeah. Yeah, who we see born in the second movie. So where would you like to see this franchise go from here, or do you not want anything else with this? Is this just like so good that it's like, don't continue? Or do I'm you fine see... if they don't continue it. Yeah. I'm fine if they do continue it. I want to see Cornelius. I'm not sure. I, I don't know. I kind of like this ending. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, okay. To go back to fast movies, fast seven. Yeah. Don't make any more. We can see where, <laughs> we can see, okay, this is going to lead to the planet of the apes. You know what I mean? With Cornelius maybe in charge. Or maybe, or maybe none of these apes still alive. Maybe it's way in the future. Let me ask you a question. I don't know this. Does Andy Circus do the mocap for anybody but Caesar here? I don't know. I was wondering I that too. I don't think he does. I don't think I so either, but I don't know. So, what if he... Would you be cool with him coming back and playing Cornelius? Cornelius? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, because he can do a completely different take. One thing I wonder throughout this franchise, I wonder a little bit in the second one, and definitely in this one, is these apes are super intelligent yeah. people. Why aren't they using more human technology? Like, why aren't they trying to, like, get some electricity going on or something like they, they get guns and that seems to be the most advanced. they want to be left alone they i understand wanna, that but well, like you think they'd be interested in this stuff they'd be I curious know. and they're try. Still, i mean as advanced as they are they're still primitive but they don't need to be primitive though yeah like the humans are but, also primitive but compared this is to where the they first started. generation of evolved apes that's I, pro- I, that's I, going to come right, I'm, right? Not, yeah, I'm not asking why they aren't f- flying helicopters around but i'm just wondering like you think they'd be more interested michael bay's planet of the apes. yeah like in the second one it's like in the second one it's like we want to get this power plant it's like why you know caesar why don't you want to like get the power plant on like oh we can use this for us too not just the humans you know yeah it's just it's just it didn't bug me but it was something i was curious about like what you know why weren't they getting involved in some of this all right let's close this up what would right. you rate this movie i gotta give it an epic man I'm going to confirm it. Epic. Yeah. I know you probably thought that from my reaction when yeah. I was going to give it. Yeah. So does that mean you would confirm all three of these epic? I guess so, yeah. I mean, a friend. That's a, that's, a, that's, a solid, that's a solid trilogy right I, there, It's man. a confirmed epic trilogy. Even yeah. with Star Wars, like I give Jedi like great and a half. Yeah. Or great. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's epic. Which one of these rank these movies? One, two, three. Really? You yeah. like one the best? No, no, I mean, but one oh, at the yeah. bottom, three at the yeah. top. But I mean, really, they're, it's minimal. You know what I mean? Like, I just, I, I really love all three of them. Oh, so three, two, one. So three I, is your Three favorite. at the top, two at the, yeah. I think I like this one the best. That's so tough, man. I, I think I still like two better. I mean, that's fine. But I mean, it's 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 minuscule, yeah, right? It's, it's minuscule. Yeah. I, I, if somebody told me one was their favorite, I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, I see that. I would probably go two, one, three. Really? I don't know. Okay, no, now you're no, talking no, no, crazy. No, no, no. I probably go two, three, one. I and mean, that's fine. Again, See, again, they're all so good. The the uh, ending of this two, is three, good. One. Like, there's just a, I don't know. I'd go two, three, one. That's like what I would do. Two might be my favorite. You're right. I don't know. I mean, this is the. I like the score a little bit better in two. This is the most. Yeah. Oh, that. Dun, dun, dun. Dun. The, there was like this 2001 space I see the very opening scene where they're going after the deer. The very opening scene of the second one. You think they're getting ready to attack a bunch of humans. And then it turns out, oh, they're just hunting. They're going after these deer. And it has this, like, almost uh, monkey or caveman around the monolith type thing yeah, going yeah. on. Oh, I remember. And that, that happens, like, 
three more times throughout the film, like during very important scenes, like when the camp is on fire and stuff like that. It's like, oh man, that's really cool. Like it was just really, I, and I they're both it. Michael Giacchino. The score is noticeably good in this. It's not like yeah. Spider-Man Homecoming. It's like, oh, it's a good score. Yeah. Even though that was Michael Giacchino. No, you notice that this is a really good score. Again, I feel like I noticed it more in the second yeah, one. Yeah, the second where... one is a... It, I wouldn't call it like an iconic score, like a Star Wars or, or James Bond or something like that. Yeah. But I mean, or even Jurassic Park. Wonder or, Woman. Or, that Wonder Woman theme. Yeah, or Back to the Future. Yeah. But I mean, it is just as solid as you can get without being iconic. I don't like this score as much. The first one, I you know, different person scoring it. It's fine. Yeah. Um, it is kind of weird that this is known as Matt Reeves kind of franchise now. Even though Rupert Wyatt started it, I definitely say Matt Reeves was able to leave his stamp on it more. Sure. Uh, but, I mean, you got to give Rupert Wyatt. Don't forget to give uh, him It also credit. has to do with the setting of the, the, the last two compared to the first one. Yeah. So you, you know heard I mean? it here, folks, on the Confirmed Epic podcast. We have all three movies, Confirmed Epic. So you have Rise, Dawn, and War. I finally Rise got it right. Rise of the Dawn of the War of the Planet of the Apes. And, uh, of course, this is Confirmed Epic. Uh, go see it. I mean, of course, we agree if you on a listen, film. If you listen to this This is like far, the first one this oh, summer let me that we say we've... this. I'm glad you brought that up. Okay. I'm going to say this so far. Yeah. And I got to say it without, you know, we got a lot more to go. I mean, we talked about how this fall and winter is going to be crazy, right? Yeah. I think this has been the best year of my life for movies. I want to know Brad Bell, real Brad Bell, R E E L Brad Bell. Yes, AKA Andrew Stokes. Is this better or not better or worse? But which do you like more, this or Wonder Woman? This is my favorite movie of the year so far. Of the far. year so far. Yeah, like if we were, Ooh. I mean, we have to. Really I was thinking of the summer. I'm thinking of the year now. Logan, I lo- I like this better than Logan, and I know you didn't like. Have it. you? I don't think you've, have you seen Get Out yet. No, Did that come out this year. That came out this I year. I thought it was December. No, I'm pretty sure it was okay. this year. I'm pretty sure it was I gotta see Get Out. I definitely saw okay. it this year. I'm pretty sure it was a March That's movie. One of the, I've been, you know, catching up on a lot of movies right. before I go back to work. I'm pretty sure it was a March movie. This is probably. Get Out in this, I'm not sure which I liked it's more. It's just such a fitting in for Caesar. And just, yeah. I mean, it stands alone. It's grand in scale, but it's intimate. I mean, great action, great character moments with that whole... I mean, this this is my favorite movie of the year. It's going to be hard for something to beat it. And we still have The Last Jedi to come yeah. out. And we, still, we also have uh, Pitch Perfect 3 still. And Justice League. <laughs> Justice Thor- League comes out this year? In November, yeah. Oh, and God. First week in November. And Thor Ragnarok. Okay, so... You really think Justice League... No, I'm joking. Okay. 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 Now, Blade Runner 2049, I'm really looking forward to that. Dennis Villain, the Wave Arrival. Still need to see Sicario. I hadn't. Yeah. Have you seen it? Nope. I had it at 10 bucks at Best Buy last it's, it's on. It's, it. it's streaming on a bunch Is of stuff. Is it on Netflix? It, I, know, I know for a fact it was on Amazon Prime for a while. I always get that Narcos mixed up. Really? And uh, I mean, and it's two. One's a TV show, one's a movie. All right, so it's my favorite movie. Like, if I was making a top ten so far, I don't know where I would put the other stuff. This would be number one for the for the. Year. But here's the thing: Saturday, I'm going to see Dunkirk on True IMAX, and people are saying it's a masterpiece as well. But people were calling it. I mean. I, I throw the word masterpiece around all the time. Okay? Yeah. But, you called your bagel this afternoon a masterpiece. <laughs> but people, <laughs> hey, you don't eat bread for two and a half days, and it tastes <laughs> like a masterpiece to you, okay? Uh, I mean, you don't hear like these sites like Slash Film and CBR and whatnot, uh, Cinema Blend, First Showing.net, throw around masterpiece a lot. Yeah. But they've said that for this and Dunkirk. Although I've heard Dunkirk is a lot of people's like least favorite Christopher Nolan movie, and it's only an but it's hour still a masterpiece. It's only an hour and fifty minutes. Yeah, I don't know. I'm really interested. I'm excited. I'm going in true IMAX, which brings me to uh, a final question here. Yes. Uh, next week, gonna try to do a episode, probably a bonus episode with Will Maney, uh reviewing yeah. Dunkirk. He's a big Nolan fan. He's driving all the way from Asheville to go see this with Evan and I. Okay. Tried to get you to go. But uh, you got some stuff going on. I was going to go on dog sitting, and I have work that day as well. Yeah. So I didn't want to leave That's the dog lot. locked up all day. All right, tentatively, 
Yeah. What do you want to do for episode 70, Andrew? Um, of course, that's not including bonuses. We're over 70. Sure, sure, sure. Um, are we going to shoot for Baby Driver? Uh, if we can find a show. I, I mean, I was thinking about still trying to see Dunkirk at some point, but... Um, yeah. But you're already doing that. Um, so maybe Baby Driver or maybe uh, one of our discussion episodes? Yeah. So we'll, where you, we'll let you decide. Ne- not really. No, we won't. <laughs> uh, next Thursday... Our t-shirt review podcast. <laughs> next Thursday will either probably be Baby Driver or a discussion. I don't think we'll do 80s icons just because I don't think Jerry's available and I don't want to do that without Jerry. Yeah, so we'll just never do it. No, we are. My goal is to get that done now by the end of the year. 80s or the whole thing? The whole thing. Yeah, exactly. You All want right, to do the Andrew whole thing. Stokes, here's the problem. Yeah. You and I, this is high quality podcasting as we're planning out our production on yeah. the air. Um, we really need to sit down before summer's out. That's what we're doing. And like, yeah, no, you know, <laughs> and like pencil in from now to the end of the year. All yeah. right, these are the movies we're absolutely reviewing as soon as possible, right? Right. Along with finishing the Icon series because I'm going back to work. And I get busier. It's football season, too. <laughs> yeah. I promise so, I'm going to keep with the podcast. <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep. All right, but no, what I'm worried about is uh, I'm get, I'm starting my national board certification this year, and that's going to keep I'm me. Nation, I'm nationally bored just hearing yeah, about it. Yeah, it's, it's going to be something else, <laughs> let me tell you. Uh, but I'm going to be busy with that. But, I mean, I don't think I'm going to be – I should – in the fall, it may go back to maybe two episodes a month. I'll just start doing it by myself. I mean, if anything else, we can always do online. You know, even oh, though we God. like doing this in person. So. Yeah, I guess. All right. I'll settle for that. But next week, either discussion or baby driver, most likely. Hopefully a bonus episode with Will May. If Will can't do the bonus, then maybe you and I review Dunkirk. Who yeah. knows? Uh is there anything else you want to say about War for the Planet of the Apes? Epic film. Epic film. Epic franchise. So My far. favorite yeah. film trilogy ever. Yeah. Um, what more can we say? Andrew Stokes, where can people find more of you on the internet, my friend? You can follow me on Twitter, at aka Andrew Stokes. You can also find me on theepicreview.com. Sometimes that's thepicreview.com. I write You wrote a Stranger articles. Things article. Yeah, well, I wrote, I was out of town. Very cool. Thank you. Uh, I write occasional articles. I'm also the only person apparently manning our Facebook page right now, so uh, you can do that as well. Um, and I think that's it. As for me, you can find me at Geeks Worldwide, dgww.com. Go to YouTube, find us, search, search Confirmed Epic Podcast. You'll find most all of our episodes on there. I'm working on getting that back catalog updated this summer. Uh, of course, you can find me at the Epic Review, thepicreview.com. Uh, check out the Technodrome Tales podcast on iTunes, starring myself and Jerry Reed, along with Kendall Hallman, my favorite Ohio State Buckeye, the only Ohio State Buckeye I like, <laughs> uh, on Technodrome Tales podcast. That's a 1987 TMT rewatch podcast. Go buy a shirt tpublic.com slash user slash the real Brad Bell. Andrew, that's R-E-E-L Brad Bell. Andrew Stokes is wearing his TH Epic Review shirt. Now it's comfortable, right? Super comfortable. Yeah. Um, also, as always, you can find all of our content. You can find me. You can reach out to me, as many have. Go to Twitter and search for the real Brad Bell, the R-E-E-L Brad Bell. And from high above the trench-filled treetops of the Hollywood foothills of North Carolina, we are out. That's all I have to say about that. This has been a production of the GWW Radio Network. Please don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes, Stitcher, and SoundCloud. Also, check out Geeks Worldwide at the GWW.com for all the latest news, reviews, and opinions on video games, comics, movies, TV, cosplay, and more. Geeks Assemble!